Yo, 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 what it do? Welcome to another episode of the TaskCast live from Dubai. I am your one and only host, Kareem Karmus. Got my partners in crime here, Timmy and Ali. What's up, fellas? How's it going, Kareem? How's things? Good, good. Hey, Kareem. How hey, your wife man? is out of town and Yuchi isn't mad hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of interested in him so I haven't wife, seen man. him smile so hard. I, I see <laughs> early to the pod. <laughs> hey, man, I, I just, I, you know, I just, the, look, I'm missing the family, but I have to admit sleep's... Uh, I've been up. catching up yeah. on sleep and even getting the chance to sleep during the day, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing you got like six stressors out of your... Although I'll make sure that I'll, I won't put that in the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the reels, not the your reels. shorts, right? No, that's right. <laughs> not the shorts you're wearing But today. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been great, but it's hot in Dubai. Oh, yeah, well, sure. I think it's hot in the entire United Arab Emirates. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, summer came late. Yeah, which was good. Which yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's come back with a vengeance. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Today, man, I saw 44, 45 in the car. Like, and not just when you start it. You know, when you first start the car. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Hard. Somebody will send you a picture of their car. And it'll be like, like in the States, right? It'll be like 110 degrees, right? And like, come on, bro. You just started the car. Wait yeah, five cool minutes down. and then send me like, don't, don't send me that bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. So uh, I actually, I, I shouldn't curse. My wife was like, why do you curse on the podcast? It's not normal. That's one of the best things. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> in your mind though, right? You said that in your mind. <laughs> I said it out loud and ran away. <laughs> But I do have an F you moment real quick, man. Last week, yeah. Ali recommended a Netflix movie. Did you oh. watch it? Uh, <laughs> was that the... Um, what was it? Where the world ends? Leave the, end? Wo- leave the leave world the behind. behind. Yeah. Leave the world. Did I, you watch it? I was going to. Okay. And then I ended up watching something else. Okay, good. I'll tell you from my personal... Save your time, bro. Save your oh, time. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't want to text oh, you because I wanted to right, talk man. about it here. But I was so disappointed, man. <laughs> bro, like, that's such a recommendation, the idea, <laughs> the idea of the movie is good. Yeah. But like we were just watching people talking in their house. Like there was no action. There was no, you know what I mean? Like, it was the suspense, but you always worried what's going to happen. It was, it was suspense, but at the end, the suspense just failed you. Like credits came up and like, that's what I've been waiting two and a half hours for. That was the like that. Sucks. Remember that, um, that movie? That Mil- was it? I'm not wasn't Mel Gibson. Oh, maybe it was. Um, remember the, the alien sense? What was the aliens That's came down? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. And then as soon as they get... No, uh, no, not that one. Oh, It's not, the one where the, the aliens come down. They're invading. They're not sure who's doing everything. And then they find out at the end that water is the thing that they fear the most. So the aliens come down to a planet that's... Full of water. 60 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. Anyway, no. like, when we talked, when we talked, uh, he mentioned he recommended that movie. I said June. It up online. I said June. Go June. watch yeah, June. I haven't checked yeah, it. I haven't checked it. Go that. watch June. June. I haven't right? checked that out. But I remember you looked it up. We were looking at the Rotten Tomato scores and stuff, and then everybody was like trying to make just for you. Oh, it's okay. Maybe some people and some people don't like her, whatever. It was cool. like Julia Roberts has aged gracefully. She's still very beautiful, but it was like You yeah, saw a brave right. man, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. to say that online. And, 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 and <laughs> you'll be a dead man if you post <laughs> it. <laughs> ju- ju- Julia, attack at him. Maybe she'll hit you up in the DMs, man. You're like, no. Uh, oh, man, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. <laughs> What do they say? No pub- uh, bad publicity is still good publicity, That's right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say some controversial stuff today. No, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good, man. <laughs> Guys, when I talk to people, my friends, of course, they know the deal, right? But when I talk to people, oh, where do you live? Like, oh, Dubai. I live in Dubai. That's what I say. Right? I don't normally say the UAE, United Arab Emirates. Uh, I think if you said UAE, a lot of people won't even know what that is. Yeah, true. Just from like clips and stuff that I see online, uh, people always say, oh, man, I've always wanted to go to that country. That's, you know, that's a really cool country or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but Dubai is not a country. You know, UAE, United Arab Emirates, is made up of seven emirates. Like the United States is made up of 50 states. Like Australia is nobody gives a shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to go there, are we? <laughs> So, so it got me thinking, like, we should expose people, let people know what the UAE is all about. Mm. The difference in these seven emirates, we'll probably focus on two or three of them, like, in, in heavy detail. Uh, and just let people know, first of all, let's educate them that the UAE is a country and Dubai is one of the emirates. Um, and it's probably the most well-known emirate. Um, following that, the most, most well-known emirate would be Abu Dhabi. Um, Abu Dhabi is you know, very, very famous. It's been in a lot of movies and people know it. I think people who know Dubai also know Abu Dhabi. I don't think you would say Abu Dhabi and nobody would know what that yeah. is. But then after that, we've got five Probably more. from the Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, 100%. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I, think oh God. God. I think it was number six or something like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to show my lack of, uh, my lack of manliness because I'm so glad I didn't say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was going to say from the Sex in the City movie. 
Was that Adam Abu Dhabi? Yeah, they came to Abu Dhabi. Give me your man card. Give me your man card. I threw that shit away a long time ago. It's not about the man card, man. He criticizes my movie, but he watches Sex in the City now, but that doesn't work. It was better than Leave the World Behind. But, Timmy, what are the other five Emirates? Okay, then you've got Sharjah. Okay. Right? Then you actually pronounce shadow. Clock. Hey man, don't look you at don't your nose. Heart, don't look man. at your nose. No, it's, it's not that. It's more about making sure I pr- pronounce it correctly because I've already got one. It's okay. Guy, that's why. That's right? why I want to know. Sh- then, um, then everybody got- says Sharjah, by the way, yeah. because Emiratis pronounce the cough as a G. Yeah. So they say Sharjah. Don't look. I see you looking. Ah, the camera's okay, not man. focused on. Then you got Rasul Khaimah. Oh, what a bitch. Right? Then also you- known as Rak. R A K. Rak. Right. And then you've got Ajman. Uh huh. You've got Fujara. Uh huh. Right. And you got Um Kayum. Oh, I always yeah. pronounce that's the one that's the Emirate unfortunately I'm really sorry for the guys who live there people live there but I no always no mispronounce there's like two or three people no one right? lives there no. and so realistically <laughs> they might not even have internet to watch the so zone. realistically there's seven Emirates yeah right? that not realistically make the, you know, there are you know. let me ask you man what's El Ain what is that considered because I always see it as like an eighth one on there. Yeah, it is and it isn't. It's like it, it's there, but it's controlled by Abu Dhabi. This okay. is what I, I know of. Okay. I may be wrong. It's like know? the countryside, you know, like even yeah. though it's all desert, but it's sort of the old school countryside, sleepy town, just a few malls, nothing too crazy. You've been? No, I have, <laughs> I'm talking like I've been. I, I know Sorry, a lot of, like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I had a couple of friends that moved here for a couple of years and they lived in Al Ain for a little while. So it's a nice area, clean and everything, but not much to do. Nothing it's it's to not. Do. I don't think it's really classified as an independent emirate. Yeah, no. You know? It's not. No, it's definitely yeah. not. It's, you know, definitely it's not. usually managed by Abu Dhabi. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. So when we compare these seven em- these seven emirates, uh, they're all the same in the generalizations, right? They're, it's a Muslim country. It's an Arab country, uh, organized. Blah blah blah. All of these things are fairly similar. But when we compare, you know, emirate to emirate. We'll find a, a lot of differences. Probably the biggest one, or the most important one, actually, being the cost of living, the cost of everything. Um, so, if you guys want to touch on that a little bit, yeah. uh, if you want to tell us a little bit about well, uh, what you did, I think you you uh, checked on schools, schooling, and yeah. So, look, let me let me go. I'll, I'll talk about brief on each one, just very quickly, and then Ali, maybe you can talk to us about. Properties, because I think yeah. a lot of people talk about properties. Well, that's yeah. the biggest expense, the right, biggest. for any household. Then I'll go on about schools and nurseries, you know, about because there are different prices. Um, a lot of the research being here. I can already tell by everything that Timmy's saying, this is going to be a long ass episode. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but I'm going to take on Absolutely. each one of this and each one of this. That's because not do anything quick. But right? if you want to know more about the UAE or if you well, want to move, what my wife this is very informative. It. Right? But... <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I was thinking it, but I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going right? to say it. But, um, and oh what you God. learn is, look, we all, did, we all probably had the same thing. We all came to Dubai. When we thought about coming to the UAE, we didn't think about any of the other Emirates, right? Uh, look, to be honest, Abu Dhabi was maybe on the cards, right? But didn't even think about the other five. I didn't Emirates. even know yeah. the other four. I knew Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Sharjah. I didn't even know Sharjah. All the, I knew was those two. The other Abu four, and not only did I not know them, it took me so long yeah. to like remember them, you know? And we had I had to like study them in the car. And, like, <laughs> yeah. What if I get stopped on the road for a million dollars? What are the seven Emirates? I think that all the time. <laughs> so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna start off. Pop quiz. <laughs> yeah, I swear. Oh, it is. Uh, look, because so, I watch a lot of game shows. A lot of a lot, I watch a lot of reels where they go up and say, "Hey, name a country that's this and for whatever." And I'm like, oh, so. Every time I watch a show, I'm like, pay attention. What did they ask me? Yeah. What did Chandler say when Rachel said this? I'm like, I got to know. Stop. Stop. Everybody likes friends, men and women alike. <laughs> I used to like friends. I do like friends. Yeah. Look, so if I'm you gonna, had friends, you would know. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start off with I'm gonna start off with Dubai, right? Now, Dubai is typically the most expensive of all the Emirates, right? It has... Um, Why did you throw typically in there? Because it is. It, it is, right? Okay. It has, it, the, from a housing perspective, it's the highest, especially in very premium locations, probably the highest schools, the highest day-to-day living, highest entertainment, services, cost the Highest more. building. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. Even even everything. <laughs> everything is high, right? Um, but Not everything the people. Is, yeah. Not the people. But everything is accessible in Dubai. Then closely after that is Abu Dhabi. Right, and Abu Dhabi is the UAE capital city, yeah. uh, uh, capital city as well as the Emirate. Right, it's right. where the government, federal government, is. Right. Um, These Emirates are called Emirate cities, yes. because there's no cities. They're really city the states. If you yeah. think about in old traditional, um, you know, in European, they would call them city states. 
right? But we here they call them emirates. Right, right, right. Right. But I'm saying like within the emirate, because like we have like within our states hundreds of cities, right? But yeah. within the emirates, there's no cities. Yeah, it's just areas, yeah. right? Like yeah, correct. There's not capital cities. Right, right, right. Yeah. So Abu Dhabi has, you know, also features. You know, they also have very close, but slightly cheaper than uh, Dubai, in living. You know, how, like housing's quite expensive. Schools are, are still very expensive. Um, but you generally, in services, they're a little bit cheaper, right? So if I list this as Dubai is probably the most expensive, Abu Dhabi definitely follows. Then you've got Sharjah. Um, interesting about Sharjah is a lot, of peop- a lot of people who work in Dubai live in Sharjah. And Sharjah has um, cheaper res- uh, uh, living costs, um, schools are a little bit cheaper there, nurseries are cheaper, services are cheaper as well. Um, so you will see a lot of people and traffic sucks. At, yeah, but yeah. going from Dubai to Sharjah, Ridiculous. right, is the worst thing possible, right? It's, I mean, and funny enough, if you see the roads, like they're like seven, eight lanes, yeah, yeah. and they're still parked. <laughs> that was a huge parking lot right? by the airport. <laughs> the trains, that trains uh, rail, uh, you know, you know, inshallah, when the train uh, link is completed, that, that should ease it up yeah. a lot. Then you've got Ras al-Khaimah. So, How many people are using trains and stuff? But anyway, keep going. We never know. And then you've got Ras al-Khaimah, right? Which has a lot more affordable uh, living standards. Schools are cheaper. Um, nurseries are cheaper. Living costs are cheaper. Um, and it is, it's quieter as well. So the population's smaller. It's very mountains-like. Yeah, um, um, so it's great for people who like the quiet life. Um, then you have Ajman. Right now, Ajman is the smallest in actual size wise right. of the Emirates. I didn't even know Ajman existed <laughs> until a year ago. You know, I knew vaguely it was there, but I had never gone to Ajman. But to be honest, I'm actually quite impressed with how far I've heard that it's developed. Um, now, Ajman is, sits on the border of Sharjah. So if you want to get into, you know, into Dubai quickly or Sharjah, that's Ajman's probably the way to go. Um, housing's very affordable there. Um, so same with schools. It's not as well developed as the as Sharjah, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi, but it's getting there. Yeah. Right. I would say it's probably what Dubai was 15 years ago. Right. Mm. You know. Okay. But I think you know, 15, so from yeah. an, I know we're not talking about investments yeah. here, but from an investment perspective, it's very affordable, right? Yep. So if you compare, um, like, for someone that wants to like. For investors that are looking for growing areas, mm. it's more affordable than the U- than Dubai, for example. Yeah, as, a, as an example. Then you've got Fujara. <laughs> that right? was Timmy's way of saying, yeah, for example, shut the hell up, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> now, Fujara is at the top, right? It's at the north, right? It borders on, one, on, 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 on some of the Oman territories. Yeah. Um, it's um, then also very low cost. It's beautiful. It's f- the, the landscape is amazing. Um, very natural and very natural, yeah. you know, where you find some of the other areas of the United Arab Emirates, particularly Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Never very, been to Fujairah, by the way. Uh, you've never. Oh, no, you I just to. wanted to break up yeah. your talk. Like. It is beautiful, <laughs> naturally beautiful, nat- nature, right? But Abu Dhabi and Dubai, a lot of complaints that you hear about people sometimes is that's very artificial, right? Um, yeah, because I hate Fujairah. hearing that. What does that mean? It means there's nothing mean? natural. So what? No, is your house natural? So no what? one's house no, no, is no, natural. No, no, no. But it, it just mean, no. As an example, are we attracted go, to natural women? Oh, sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, and the emirate I, I struggle with the, the most to pronounce is Um Al Kuwain. Uh-huh. Kuwain, right? Uh-huh. Now that is. Can prob- I go out on a limb and say none of us have visited that emirate? I've been. I have. <laughs> I, I, I actually been. I've no. never been. I've never, right? I've never even been. To I, I, I went on a tour one time because I was actually looking at um, which you're going to talk about is the housing. Yeah. Right. Um, it's a, it's an emirate that is probably the least developed, and have a, and has the lowest population, right? Um, but if you wanted to minimise your expenses, right, it is probably two thir- no a thirty percent of the price can of living freeze, in Dubai. Can we freeze that face that you just uh, <laughs> yeah. face and just <laughs> we'll turn it into a turn into a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it is. Look, but and look, and we'll go on to. I don't want to take too much time and go to Ali, but each emirate. Nigga, you talk for ten minutes and then say you don't want to take yeah. up too much time. Each emirate, <laughs> Dubai is probably the most advanced, right? Um, you mm. know, and um, most advanced in what way? How is it more advanced? Probably than Probably infrastructure. 
uh, infrastructure, cleanliness. How is uh, it more secure? advanced than Abu Dhabi? All those things you said, right. I would say Abu Dhabi is equal. No, I would say Dubai. I mean, like you can go Look, to Dubai is definitely faster paced than Abu faster Dhabi. Faster paced. Uh, it bigger builds malls. things, bigger malls, builds things, a lot of entertainment, a lot of facilities. Yep. Um, there's always something get, happening yeah. in Dubai. There's always something new. There's always someone taking a risk, someone Absolutely. opening a fancy restaurant. Right. Well, let's get back to the entertainment in. aspect. Yeah. Adi, tell us a little bit about what you found about the rents. Okay, and then we'll so, come back to the school. Okay, so it, look, it's like anywhere in the world, right? You want to live in the heart, in the hustle and bustle, be seen, um, the best restaurants, the best cafes. It costs more. So, for example, if I refer to some of my research or just in general from just anecdotal knowledge and talking to people, obviously Dubai is the most expensive emirate out of all of them. Yeah. And then, obviously, as what Timmy said, you got Abu Dhabi after that, Sharjah, Ajman. I'm not going to talk about Raq, uh, which is Ras al-Khaimah for Jaira or Umm al because they're mostly tourist locations and it's sleepy towns. I would, I would classify them as sleepy towns. So Very few people are immigrating correct. from their home country to those emirates. Correct. Not, not saying there isn't. I mean, there's the casino coming course, up in Raq. Um, but the thing is, expat, expat population there is quite low. Um, so it's mostly locals, um, you know, maybe old school locals that have been in the UAE from the very beginning since its inception. You know, very simple and workers. life. And workers. Yeah, workers. Yeah. Simple workers, life. Yeah. You, have workers you know, um, but I'll, I'll give you an example, right? So let's just say I'm, I, I made it simple. Because, look, obviously there's some areas in Abu Dhabi, some areas in Sharjah that are just as expensive as Dubai. And don't but, you get those questions from friends? Like, oh, how much course. is written in Dubai? Like, bro, that's like such a loaded question. It could be, you know, pennies here and through the roof here. I mean, I, you want to live in the Burj Khalifa? You want to live in Mirad? Like, I mean, um, for, for our, my rental journey, I found some villas in Dubai for 100,000 dirham, but yeah. completely run down. Yeah. Amazing. $27,000 uh, a year. Yeah, American, yeah. which is like, wow. You know, right, like, right. especially these days. Yeah, yeah. And then I found some for, I don't know, 200 grand American that are just like out of this world. You know what I mean? On the water have a third level, fourth level, have a rooftop seating, has an elevator, yeah, yeah. A nanny's, uh, two nanny's rooms, a driver's room, I mean, a, a dog's room, I don't know, whatever you can come up with. Man. Pure mansions. That's for you. <laughs> the we dog room is for you. We would call them mansions back home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For pretty sure. much, yeah. yeah. So, so pretty much, so what, what I did to keep it simple, I think a standard home for most people, this is a three bedroom, yep. right, which is, a, you know, a couple and two or three kids, right? So as an example, say you wanted to rent in Ajman, you probably you could probably pick up something as a three bedder between fifty to seventy five thousand dirham, wow. right? Which is these, very affordable. All these quotes for the listener. All these quotes are yearly. Yearly. The, sorry, annual yeah, rates. Yeah, yeah, the UAE they advertise them as an annual as yearly, rate. Correct. Yeah. So you really see online monthly. Right. So these are yearly, right? Whereas, for example, in Dubai for a three bedder, you're probably looking at two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dirham. That's almost a five fold increase. Right. Now, as I said at the beginning, obviously, Dubai, you're going to have more restaurants, more cafes. It's going to be busier. But it depends what you want to achieve. So in Australia, a lot of people work in the city. They're willing to trek an hour, an hour and a half in the morning, hour, an hour and a half in the evening, you know, because they can't afford to live in the city, but they can, uh, you know, afford to work there or it's the best location, you know, for promotion opportunities. So, but it's obviously cheaper to live outside the city. So the UAE is exactly the same. Right, now, I'll compare, for example, buying a villa. I won't compare Ajman in Dubai. We just compared those for renting. If you were, to, for example, to buy a villa in Sharjah, a three-bedroom, you probably pick up one for, say, I'm going to talk about American, between 250000 to 400000 American. Very affordable. Yeah. Whereas if you want to pick one up in Dubai, you're probably looking at around 700000 okay, up to, say, $1.5 million American. And that's like a standard three better. They yeah, can yeah. go up as high as fifty million. You know. If yeah. You wanna... Again, depending on. You where think they you're are. spending a million dollars on a villa? You think you're getting a mansion, and then you just walk in, and it's just your typical. You know, it just happens house. to be in a nice area. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, what yeah. I love, so for example, in Australia, just because that's where I'm from, there's not much difference between areas. I know that sounds a bit crazy. So what I mean by that is, I mean you might be able to go an hour away and find a cheaper house price, but relatively, what are you getting? You're getting the same size. As everywhere else, you're getting the same land size, you're getting similar community. There's not much difference of the areas. Maybe one's closer to the water. Whereas in the UAE, if you have a really low budget, mm. you can still live comfortably, live within your means, and it's only half an hour away from the water. Actually, yeah. some of them like Fujaira and Rak, I mean, they're closer than, than living in Dubai or Abu Dhabi to the water. So mm. I think that's a big advantage. So I think as an encouragement to people that want to move here, don't think you have to come to Dubai right away. If you're not sure about your decision, come to Ajman. It's half an hour to Dubai. Come to Sharjah. I mean, take a leap of faith, go to Fujaira. I mean, I was checking online today doing some research. I saw an 11-bedroom house 
for like 80,000 American. I mean, man, you could bring a whole family and charge them rent, you know? <laughs> if they wanted to make we money off them. You know? We know how Ali thinks. Exploitation <laughs> begins at home. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so look, the, uh, I mean, there's very, very expensive. I know that's common sense. Very, yeah. very expensive, very, very cheap, and then in the middle. But I guess it just depends what you want to achieve by living in the UAE. Uh, Karim, you were going to discuss some of the entertainment aspects of the UAE? Yeah, sure. I mean, I just wanted to, basically, when we were talking about this, we're talking about a financial aspect, but we're also talking about a quality of life. Mm. So to hear from you, to go to Sharjah, and alhamdulillah for everything, man, everybody has to live within their financial means, right? Yeah. Um, but like to live in Sharjah and drive in that traffic, it's absolutely ridiculous, man. You said an hour and a half to get to Dubai, like minimum. If you're leaving at 7.30, 8 o'clock. But after, we're saying peak hour. That's why like peak hour, it's half of that, less than half. Something. But, yeah, that's but even at peak hour, it could be more. But that's like, going yeah. through Sheikh Zayed Road. If you go through the E11. Um, like Emirates Road. Yeah, Emirates but there's Road. not a lot over there, right? Yeah. So like most yeah. people are not doing that. Yeah. That's why, that, that's why yeah. it's empty. But anyway, the only thing that I wanted to say is that to me, uh, and everybody has their own priorities, but like it's more important to me to pay a little bit extra and not have to travel as far and of be course. able to spend more time at home. The gas is whatever, not a big deal, but obviously sitting in your car for three hours a day, 15 hours a week, gas adds up, mileage adds up, wear and tear, I mean, blah, the blah, mental, blah. mental toll as well to you. So to me, I feel like that takes away from your quality of life, right? Sure. Like we're not even talking about the amenities of wherever you live. We're just talking about- I mean, Karim, if you're spending three hours a day in the car, yeah. that's what, 15% of your day? That's a lot, man. That's, 15% yeah, yeah, of your... so much. That's and if you're having marital issues or whatever, more power to you, right? But like... <laughs> yeah, but, it, but I mean, like, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people gonna... will say there's a difference between paying 200,000 or 250,000 uh -huh. for a three-bedroom house or 100,000 in charger. Yeah. People will look at that and go, well, of that's course. 150,000 dirhams. Right, that's right, 50,000 right. American. That's right. a lot of money. That's yeah, a yeah. lot of money. Of course, of you course. Know, that is a lot of... I'm willing to do the three hour, you know, yeah. there and back because I can... I can live in a in an emirate that has maybe um, that is a cheaper cost of living, right? But on the same instance, right, I can use that fifty thousand dirhams for something else. True. Maybe I can drive a nicer car. Maybe I can put my kids in a better school. Yeah. Maybe I just want to save. Might be able to buy yeah. a property back home. You know? Again, yeah. it's all yeah. about the person's priorities, right? right? Because you could buy a Nissan Sunny <coughs> or you could buy a Mercedes, right? And like everybody's still driving a car. It's just about what's a priority for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have a lot of money and still don't buy expensive cars. Because that that's not a priority yeah, for them. Yeah. Why would I spend yeah. fifty, hundred thousand dollars on a car when this fifteen thousand one gets me back and forth just fine? You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, here in the UAE, something to think about <laughs> is that there is this like status thing. You know, yeah. I told you guys when I first moved here, man, we rented a Chinese car, and I think I talked about it on previous pod. <laughs> no one let you but, through. <laughs> oh my god, man! Oh my god! You didn't you exist on the road. You were invisible. I was a homeless guy. <laughs> on a skateboard in the road nobody gives you any respect you pull up you try to valet they don't want to valet you do valet they like get you out the car quick and hide the car underground you know what I mean oh so then I put you up at the top eh, no where the no pool they is. don't leave it I said you'll park me next to all the Lambos they're like no no we can't do that we can't. we'll park you inside the Lambo you know um, but what I found man living here in Dubai is that not only is there so much to do but it's always always growing Right, like the ruler of Dubai is always adding new things. Like, alhamdulillah, we've lived here four and a half years, and we're still doing new things. Mm. It's not like we finished everything that yeah. we wanted to do. And remember, we visited four times before we moved here on vacation, where every single day we were doing a touristy new thing. Now, obviously, we've repeated some things, right? Of course. But there's still so much we haven't even done. You know, I just went to the frame last year because we had friends visiting. Like, oh, let's take them to the frame. But before that, had never been. Like, there's always, always stuff I mean, to do. I mean, I've been here. I've come multiple times as a tourist. And probably four or five times before I came to, and I've been here in November, will be three years. I still haven't done the top of the Burj Khalifa. Because you're I almost haven't... there. <laughs> <laughs> He's almost that tall. He used to look up. Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't done the Dubai frame. I still haven't done the, oh man, the one in um, New World Trade Center, the silver thing. Oh, yeah. the museum, museum of the future. Museum of the future. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I heard the lobby is the best part. It's dope from outside. <laughs> Walk inside, inside, look around, and then leave. Like don't, make, pay, don't pay a ticket, man. <laughs> we took our friends there too when they came. Yeah. And it was, uh, alhamdulillah for everything, man. It was a disappointing experience. Yeah. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was no, like, I was told that being in the lobby is the best part. Just you can go in the lobby, have a look and leave yeah. it. It's not to me, looking for. at it from the outside at night, whoo, amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Architecturally, man, that big old oh, it's one of, it's a, empty... It's you know, a, wow, it's been about five years building it, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Started but you know, the amazing thing about the, it is that it has no frames. Wow. Pillars. 
right? Oh, wow, yeah. And that's one of the things that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's the, oh, one of the first buildings around the world. It may not be the first, but it's one of them yeah. that has no yeah, yeah. Uh, that's insane. pillars. That's the well, amazing. I mean, you know, even, even a lot of things, like I know this is not <coughs> everyone's cup of tea, but they do camel racing here. Yeah. You know, we've never been to a camel race. Right, you know? right, so, right. And like, for example, I think next year they're starting the flying taxi from Abu Dhabi to Dubai. Yeah, that would and be amazing. And they're recruiting yeah. pilots now. Like, yeah. I mean, they're just starting, you know, that's just the first thing. And we're going to have driverless cars in the next 10 years. And, you know, Timmy's AI rant is going to come true finally after <laughs> 20 years of predictions. You know, although, hey, look, although I wasn't, I have to admit, I wasn't happy with the idea of robot um, soldiers. Uh, petrol. <laughs> no, that's okay. Robot <laughs> petrol <laughs> attendants. Oh, are they doing that? Yeah, in Abu Dhabi. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm like, you're already paying the workers not that much money. Do you I really think it costs more to maintain the robot, man. But this is the thing about the UAE, and I know we're branching off, but the UAE is willing to trial out. I mean, if I was an, an inventor, I was in robotics or I was in whatever, UAE is one of the best places. They'll I mean, try the best, anything. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. the best, I mean, wasn't there a phase, I think, after World War II where everyone was flocking to the US? You know, all yeah. the smart brains. I mean, I'm not going to compare the UAE to the US in terms of people flocking here, but. I feel like some of the smartest people in the world right now are in the UAE. Yeah. You know, if every... you have money, yeah. right? And I think the least appealing thing about the UAE is the heat. Yeah. Right? And if you if you have some type, I don't want to say if you're racist, but like if the idea of living in a Muslim country, which when you say Muslim country, right, it sounds like the old school thought that we had years it's ago. It's not Iran, it's not Saudi Arabia. No, no, no. no. And yeah. I mean, these, even these countries, I mean, Saudi Arabia, very especially, liberal. they're very, yeah, they're changing, Iran, they're changing Iran's, a lot. Iran's very but here, too. like, it's it's a Muslim country, there's mosques everywhere, the, the, the call for prayer goes off, you know, there is Arabic written, but you, like, I rarely speak Arabic. I'm always, uh, you know, English speaking. seems to be like the universal language. Because everybody is coming, yeah. and no, most of the people who come don't speak, yeah. don't speak Arabic. So yeah. you go out and you do things, and, and you speak I English. I mean, the Philippines, Indians, Pakistanis, they all speak English, yeah, Lebanese. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, for example, Lebanon French used to be the language taught in school, not anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. now English. Yeah. So, so if I you mean, can get over yeah. the heat, and you can get over, and that, Muslim Arab aspect doesn't offend you or bother you and you have money and you're successful Dubai is the place to be like why would you think of going For anywhere sure. else Look, I, like I, honestly even when I I'm so sorry to cut no, you no, off you're right, man. No, no, even you're when right. I tell people I moved here from the US their jaw drops especially Americans like you left America like the best country in the world because that's how we're raised and that's how we're taught right that this is the best country in the world and I love the country and it is a great country it is an amazing country but when you travel outside and it doesn't have to be to the UAE you go other places you see so much so many different things so you've got money you're successful you want to open a new business you're looking on the globe right where do I want to go why wouldn't you explore explore the UAE? Absolutely. Yeah. There's there's zero. I can't think of any reason. Well, I mean, like especially I said. the barriers to entry have disappeared, most of them. Before it used to be... So as an example, I've been exploring the Saudi market for property. It's impossible to buy. Like even till now, not that I'm going to purchase anything, I'm just doing my research. They, they've, they've literally got maybe one project at the moment, which is severely overpriced. And that's the only project that foreigner can buy in. Um, all the other projects, um, I was speaking to an agent, international agent, and they're pretty much saying, you know, you have to have a, it's, you can buy it and you live in it, but you can't buy and rent it. Mm. You have to have another, like, permit to rent it, and you can't get that permit unless you're living in the country, right? And so, and the agent's saying they're, they're very slow. So, c if you compare Saudi to the UAE, because, mm. you know, Saudi wants to grow, <coughs> the UAE, you can buy freehold property, you can come set up a business, you can literally come today, within a week, have everything ready to go. You know, set up everything, have your bank account ready. I know sometimes there's delays with bank accounts. Your visa, I mean, I know the visas also sometimes, say within two weeks, you could be ready to go. But just or so you know, man, today, before, when, so sorry, so today when I was looking online, it, it showed, I, many different sources showed that the UAE, uh, many showed that it was the number one easiest place to get a visa for. Yeah. And if it wasn't number one, it was always in the top five. Yeah. I mean, can you get a freelance um, visa? Freelance visa, you're pretty much telling them, I'm coming to live here on my own accord. Yeah. Dude, you can, even, you can, can even you get that? a remote yeah. worker visa. Yeah. Right. Well, you can do online business in the UAE. Is yeah. That? So, you, well, effectively, your business is let's say, for instance, your your business is in Australia, in in the US, right? But you just want to live in the UAE. I mean, that's exactly what we did. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. where you no, but where you got the freelance license? Yeah. Right. Because there was no remote one three years ago. Right. Now there is a remote vi a worker visa. Oh, nice. Okay, right? got you, got you. Where you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to even... Ex you don't even have to fake the freelance Fake thing. the freelance <laughs> one. You can, just, you can just say, I'm a remote worker. Here's my paperwork from the company that I own or work for. Yeah. And I'm living in Dubai now. Yeah, yeah. Or the UAE, sorry. Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. Karim, like a lot of the points that we made earlier, 
like for example you're talking about traffic for people like me and you and maybe others that move for the same purpose as us we that traffic's not an issue for us because we're not really working here you know like we we're working but our businesses are outside of the uae we're, we're not having to drive to the office we're not having to Correct. drive home but even men taking kids to school and getting back home and everybody and their mamas taking the kids to school well dubai is becoming very busy in the last 18 months I would say that Dubai has become the busiest that I've ever seen. When I was here, when I, I came, you know, a few months before you did, traffic was fine. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Tim, right? is that when we came, is yeah. that it was right before COVID, then COVID hit, everything shut down, and then after that, things started to open up. So if you were here a little bit earlier, maybe, and then also with Dubai growing in its popularity, yeah. we see every single day, literally, <coughs> there's this convention here, there's this expo here, there's this group meeting here, a conference here. Like, everybody's coming here. And honestly, it's mm. a great, like, when you're in America, you go to, you know, whatever it is, Florida, and everybody comes there. But, like, when you're talking globally, Dubai is a great place for everyone to come and meet up and have a great time for and sure. have great amenities mm. and, and be spoiled and do after work activities and things like that. Yeah. So this, of course, adds to the traffic, man. Yeah, and, and, and to talk to your point is because there's so many conventions and people are flying in, it's causing more traffic. Of course. There's a hell of a lot more traffic, yeah, yeah. right? One time I had a meeting that I needed to go to see my bank partner. And I had forgotten, well, all of us had forgotten that there was a convention going on. It was... Um, the COPA, I think. Uh, no, it was uh, the, the tech one, one. The big, yeah, the big yeah, technology yeah. one. Okay. Didn't think about it, right? It took me, uh, it usually takes me from my house, right, to uh, where the bank is, right? It usually takes about 25 minutes, 30 minutes max. Took me an hour and a half. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, right, yeah. and I had to end up paying two hundred dirhams for parking for a valet just in front of valet, the hotel. Yeah, had to jump in because He's you know I had I had high executives at this bank waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, well, you know what I always tell people, man, yeah. when they complain about traffic, like yeah. if you don't like traffic, go live somewhere where nobody wants to live. Yeah, and you're yeah. not going to be happy well, there. Yeah. You want to live in a place that has a good quality of life where you're going to be happy, where you're going to have fun, where it's good for your family, it's safe, blah, all mm. these things. So does everyone else. Mm. Sure. And all of those people are going to bring their cars and whatever. So I mean, it's a human right. But I'm going to tell, Safety I, and yeah, but I'm going to tell you something, sustenance. right? So I used to think the same way with you, Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. And I remembered when I first came into the UAE in 2019, and I went to check out a couple of, except for Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is always beautiful, right? Love Abu Dhabi. Right? <laughs> Suck up. Right? But I, um, I was thinking of a special but I, you know, I remember going to Sharjah. <laughs> I remember going to thing, and I wasn't very impressed with it. Yeah. A few years later, I'm amazed at Sharjah. Well, do you? I was surprised, you know, because there's there's beautiful ministry. That's very cultural. Education is amazing. You know, it's well, culture is the culture and arts yeah, center, center of the UAE. Right? It's amazing. There's a lot of community style villas that are being built now. Right? Where five six years ago they weren't there. Yeah, yeah. It was right? all standalone. Yeah, all yeah, standalones. All nothing like this. So if you like the Dubai community, so I've I've always lived in the community. Um, I've enjoyed that. So right? community means him is like an American style gated community, twenty four hours compound, security. We call them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's pools, pools, gyms, yeah. parks, you name it, right? There's even malls in these yeah. things, like little small mini malls. So now like, you don't yeah. have to. Some look, of them have petrol yeah. stations. Some of them have yeah, petrol you don't stations. have to. So Sharjah has compound. a lot of them yeah. now. They've really Correct. made it a family safe emirate, yet it's conservative. Right? It's super conservative. It's super conservative. So we're yeah. saying Islamically conservative. For those that don't, don't know what yeah. we mean, Islamically even, conservative. Even if, you're, yeah. Yeah. even if you're not Muslim, no. it's still the same. No, no, it's just Muslim, not walking right? around half naked, right? right. Or whatever. That's like why you I can don't in go. Dubai, right? That's why I don't go. Right? The <laughs> drinking is, I think drinking is just not. No alcohol, no alcohol allowed at all. in charge at all. Right? Yeah. You can't bring it in. You can't buy it. You can't find that's it. Right. Not in a hotel, not in a resort, nowhere. Yeah. And that's what I mean by it's conservative. Yeah, yeah. Right? Ajman, right? They're starting to build up. Right? And again, they're building, they're starting to build communities. Right? And I think what's happened is, is a lot of the other Emirates are looking at the success of Dubai. Right? No one Abu Dhabi's doing it. Where before they used to build a lot of standalone villas as well. Now they've got communities. I think it's thinking right? about it, if you have kids, right? Especially, we just we spoke about the heat a little earlier. I mean, they're going to be cooped up for a couple of months a year inside, right? Assuming you don't go back to your home country for the summertime here. So if there's a community and they make friends around the community, I mean, they come over. You. That's what's happening with me now. Friends are coming over in my son's house. He's going over friends' houses. They're going on bike rides. They you know, go to the, the pool, pools. whatever it is. So, I mean, it's very convenient. When standalone, it's very isolated. Yeah, it's absolutely, you know. So another thing that's very important, when, especially if you're bringing your family here, is schooling, 
right? And schooling is something that I think from people who come from Western countries where they've got public schooling and there's the, our choice of private schooling, it is a little bit of a shock in regards to how much schools cost here. Well, because so, here there's no public school except for the Emiratis. That's right. The correct, actual right? Emiratis. Whether you yep. get a residency visa, whatever, you still, you're an expat, you have to pay for a private school. Yep. So, so Tim, give us an example. So say in Dubai, what would the average yeah. So I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you... He's trying to rush you. I'm going to give you... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's all right. I'm going to no, no. give you... So just, just so the thing is, I'm only going to talk about British and American schools. Yeah. Right? So I'm talking from a Western expat perspective. Because nobody wants to go to Australian schools. Right. Learn yeah, that, they're take, part of that. Learn how to take care of kangaroos. No, so I mean, is, I'm not talking about French schools, German schools, Indian schools, Pakistani schools. You know, all that stuff. I'm just we got talking it, about mate. the main. I'm just talking about the main ones, right? Um, now in Dubai, and I'm going to use U.S. prices because people are aware of the U.S. Because the right? U.S. is the bomb, baby. Not for long, man. <laughs> not for long. Do you hear what Saudi did? They're not signing the U.S. Uh, uh, dollar, uh, uh, they're not renewing Petro, it. Dollar. Yeah, oh, really? You're in danger, yeah, man. Yeah, BRICS is about... Uh, yeah. so <laughs> an don't average, get me started. Yeah. So an <laughs> average price in Dubai, and I'm going to say good rating because we can have another episode about the different ratings of schools, but I'm just going to say it's good, a good rating, right? The average fees for, uh, for a school is around 9000 about 10000 US dollars. Per, per year. Per year. Per child. For, for a child. Yeah. With the highest... A bit low. I would say a bit, that's a bit With the highest... Though. Right, being around about twenty-seven thousand USD yeah. per year, right? Uh, that's for top-tier schools, right? So imagine you come from a country where there's almost free, or even private schools are subsidised by the government in somewhat. Yeah. Here, it's, there's no subsidies. Right, you are paying out of pocket. If your employer is paying it, great. If not, or you have your own company, it's 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 a hit. And as your child gets older. The fees get go higher, right? Right, because it costs more. You know, you have more dip more teachers. Uh, someone asked me, well, why are the te- why is the cost going up? Well, between from kindergarten all the way to maybe four or maybe two year six, right? You know, usually they got one teacher, maybe two or three, but when they get to high school, they got five, six teachers. Yeah. You know, one's teaching maths, one teaching science. Correct. One, all then they have one teacher yeah, doing everything. Of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. So it costs more. Then Abu Dhabi is a little bit cheaper, but still in the higher range. The average price is around eight thousand six hundred US dollars per year. Timmy, if I could just interject real quick, yeah. because if I'm in America, right, or Australia, I don't know why I'd be there, mm. but if I was in America <laughs> or Australia, and I'm listening to this podcast because it's such yeah. an amazing podcast, and I'm hearing you say these things, and I've never visited Dubai, this this sounds crazy, yeah. right? Because I think of uh, our public schools, right, and I think like, wow, whoa. But when you come here and you see the schools, because I do just want to point that out. I'll, I'll talk about. I will talk about okay. them, right? right? I will right. talk about right. how great they are. Okay. They're a bit big. Right. But the highest fees in Abu Dhabi is very similar to uh, Dubai, twenty seven thousand USDs. Now, this is where it starts getting different, right? This is the shock. Now, charger fees, right, on average for good schools is around about 5,500 USD. So remember I said to you, America, was like 10, uh, Dubai was 10,000. Yeah, yeah. So that's half the price. That's about 45% yeah. off, right? With the upper ranges of top tier charger schools being around about the 20,000 USD, right? Then Ras Al Khaimah, is only four and a half thousand USD average, with the top around about sixteen thousand USD. Then Fujira is around about the four thousand two hundred USD, and then the highest is around about thirteen and a half thousand Very USD. Affordable. Right? Yeah. Then Ajman, the average price, and the reason why I know this because I've checked. Right? I've been. I've right. The average prices is around three thousand eight hundred. Wow. USDs per month. Wow. With no, the no, per max, year, per year. Per year, per year sorry. That's with okay. the maximum being around about 11,000 wow. USD. Top wow. tier American or British school. You've depressed me. Right? <laughs> right? Now, um, um, al Kuwain, is that Kuwain, right? Uh-huh. For free. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting enough, it's slightly cheaper than Ajman. It's about 3,600 US dollars per no, month. The they, pay you, they pay you to go there. Right? And the highest school fee, highest premium school in, in, in that emirate, 9,500 And you have to USD teach your own kids. <laughs> right? right? No, interesting enough, I'm going to tell you this. This is something that I've learned. So this is going to Karim's point. Okay, well, I'm paying all these fees. What do I get? The facilities in the UAE are amazing. If you ever seen like um, some of those American universities and you see those 
beautiful Harvard lawn, style. Harvard, and yeah. they've got facilities and sporting equipment, pools, and and some and of them have Olympic. Do you guys have tech? We call them technical colleges, like. You have like Woodward. really nice universities and yeah. you have a technical college. We have that in Australia, we have, right? We yeah, TAFE. And those are like cheaper. And, yeah, cheaper. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so even the schools here blow those technical colleges yeah. out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Like those technical colleges look like public yeah. schools. Yeah. So you so. are paying for great facilities. Yeah. Your kids have access to the most modern computers. Indoor, outdoor indoor, pools. Indoor, outdoor pools. Uh, sporting facilities. Usually on average, you know, for a good school, Right, they will have pools. Um, they will have um, you know uh, uh, football fields, basketball, gymnasium. But they Some also, have gyms. They're also all buildings, like because in, yeah. in Australia a lot of times auditoriums, there's, uh, yeah. ma- the mountables. You know, if they're a bit short of space, they'll just put up some demountables or trailers, temporary. like we call yeah, them. Yeah, trailers, yeah, yeah. All of our schools in the US, yeah, no, no. Yeah. This all is, of these really, schools, all of, they build a school brand new and then they still put trailers. Uh, on. Yeah, in they, Australia, you were the dumb class if they put yeah, you in. 100%. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you were in the trailer, no, 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 not in America. The, the brilliant kids got, got inside. Right, you no. were the. I don't want to say dumb and I. I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, you've heard these short bus jokes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Special was, kids. That was the yeah, only yeah. way you could judge yeah. if you came on a short bus. <laughs> so you are paying. Now that doesn't guarantee though that the teachers are great, right? But from a facilities perspective, they're top tier. So when you go to a any UAE school, right, that's good. You know, good stuff. That's even acceptable can be. Can be and when impressive. you say good and acceptable, we're not talking about personal ratings, but talking, the KHDA actually yeah, ranks each, these schools. Yeah, each Emirate has their own. Um, uh, You're right, KHDA department. is just for Dubai. Yeah, KHDA yeah. is the Dubai one, but they go every two years, I think it is, and they go and evaluate them, right? Yeah. Um, so when you go on a tour, you are going to be impressed, Yeah. right? And you're going to be looking, and your kids are going to be, ah, and you're like, look, my kids, my, I sent my family back home, and they're now looking at the schools going, this is a dump. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And I've had to remind them, look, there's a difference in price, you know, and there's a difference in quality. So you get what you pay for. For sure. Right? So don't take that as a, you know, because you are paying a lot. For well, I think Ali mentioned in a previous uh, episode about, I mean, not only the schooling yeah. from open to close, but coming in early for ECAs, extracurricular yeah, activities. Yeah, yeah. And after That's school. After, yeah, the after schools. Yeah. You know, you know they, even the busing is, is really nice. You know, he. I, I know it's what you do have to pay extra for. Which you have to pay extra yeah. for. It's not free. It's not free, right? But but they're if, nice buses. But they're yeah, like the charter yeah. buses that we use but in, in the Sydney, US. In Sydney, yeah. in Australia, I know the US is different, but in Australia, you only get dropped off on the bus line. Right here, they come to your door. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think in US they come to your door. No. Or some some. Maybe okay, maybe if you, probably private schools do, but yeah. public schools don't. They yeah. have a route, and you got to wait yeah. at that corner. That's and, right. Right. So here in the in 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 the UAE, they come to your yeah. door. And then there's a driver, and then there's like a helper, and that yeah. helper gets out and will come and get the kid and walk him onto the yeah. bus. And yeah, and usually it's a male and female. You know, usually the driver might be a male, and and the helper is a female. So to make sure that you know there's nothing happens, yeah. right? So quality is much better than let's say in many western western countries, right? But you pay for that. Yeah, but just so you know, if you wanted to get, in the U.S. at least, if you wanted to get a comparable education mm. a comparable fa- and or a comparable facility, yep. you would have to go to a private school. Yeah. Yep. And you would have to pay more than those numbers that you just said. For sure. Yep. So in a previous episode, we talked about, and I was telling you guys, $10,000 U.S. dollars, that's $1,000 a month. That's not that crazy to get a good education if you have the money. Yep. If you're living in the States and it's free, then yeah, it's a lot to ask for you to pay an extra grand sure. to get the, I don't want to say the same education, but to get an education, right? Mm. The end goal is a degree, whatever. But again, my, my stance in this conversation today is the quality of life, mm. right? You, got, you guys are talking about the financial aspect, which is vital, of course. But for me, I look about what do you get for that quality, right? Like you're bang for your buck. Well, right? so- Got him. So going back to our earlier point, <clears throat> a lot of people, I think, during COVID made the decision um, that, you know what, I'm not happy with my life. I'm not happy being locked up. I'm not happy being gi- given little information by my government. What can I do to better my life? So that's why we, uh, Timmy said earlier, before COVID, there was less traffic, cheaper villa prices. Like I was speaking to our mate last week. He said before COVID, like my area near where I live, Jomeda, he said, you would find a full lease on in every fifth or sixth house. 
You know, yeah. it'd be very easy to get a villa. Now it's almost impossible. He's been searching for a year. Yeah. He just can't find the right villa, right? If you so, bought a... Go ahead, go ahead. No, sorry. Yeah, okay. What were you saying? I was just going to say, if you bought a villa during COVID, like 2020... Oh, you doubled right? your money now. You minimum. doubled minimum. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Next minimum. year, 2021, you yeah. would have doubled your money. Yeah. And if you held on to it this long and special and, and uh, you know, hit places like Dubai Hills and things like that, you can triple and quadruple yeah, your even money. even Arabian ranches, And we're not just talking about um, tripling $100,000. We're talking about tripling millions of US yeah. dollars, right? You bought a villa for 10 million. Million, uh, Durham and you're selling it for 20 and 25 uh, because here there's like there's a lot of money so people don't necessarily care what's the value yeah, right yeah. in the US like I really want this car but it's only worth 10 I'm only paying 10 no here people have a lot of disposable income it's only worth 10 he's paying 11 he's paying 12 I'll pay 15 I'll pay 20 whatever it is yeah, yeah. Uh, so so yeah you're exactly right man you're yeah, exactly right yeah man. so the thing is right so COVID came people decided to move so I mean, Move I did within man. the Emirate or no, outside? just like, like within the UAE, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. also villas, villas. Yeah, you yeah, know, nobody course, wanted. I mean, a lot of us, like I lived in an apartment for the first year. Yeah, right. And during COVID, you know, I spent six months. Of, yeah, but six seven months of that during COVID. After that experience, when my lease and I was living in Dubai Hills, right? Yeah. But I was like, you know what? I'm not staying in an apartment. Right, right, right. <laughs> Again, cooped up, the kids. cooped up in the uh, kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so I moved out looking for a villa. Right, and people were starting to swoop on villas. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. You know? If you come here for quality of life, which is what Karim is saying, you're happy to pay for schooling. Now, the thing is, I'm not happy to pay fifty grand American per child per year. Right. But I'm happy to pay something reasonable. You yeah. know. So I just, I guess, it just depends what you're looking for out of the schools. Yeah. My personal experience, my kids have been to a UK. Both schools are UK curriculum, and I found them to be great schools. Yeah. You know, but like any school, you know, there's some sort of bullying. There's bound to be some sort of I think they're dealing with kids some sort of racism you know some sort of not maybe the principal's not the best maybe this teacher's not the greatest teacher you can't get the best of everything you'll never get a guarantee yeah, so there's always yeah. going to be challenges but I do think when you come to the UAE you automatically elevate your standards for everything for sure. right the food's got to be better and the service's got to be better and the clean's got to be straight everything's got to be nicer and cleaner I mean don't you get annoyed safer. now when you go to a restaurant there's no valet parking it's like man in, in Australia there's nowhere that gives you yeah, like yeah. nowhere yeah. and it's like you're getting annoyed because you can't park your yeah. car <laughs> You know, I had to walk, sir, two minutes to get to your <laughs> restaurant. That's unacceptable. I'm never coming here again. Or <laughs> well, the table's not clean up. <laughs> yeah, fast yeah, enough. yeah. No, but uh, but yeah, you definitely you well, know. You close at two a.m., not three a.m. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, man. So anyway, back to the the quality of life. Obviously, in Dubai, most people know who have who have ever heard of Dubai. Dubai has tons of accolades, right? Tallest building, biggest aquarium, best this, best that. So many of these things. There's so many things to do. Uh, in Dubai, you got Dubai parks and resorts, you've got the aquarium, you've got the tallest building, you got the frame, you got all of these things. I, and I mean, if I wanted to, I could go on forever. With, yeah. I don't even have a list. I'm just naming from my Off head, thinking about the things that we that we do as a, as a family. The IMG, Global Village. Yeah, so much. Um, even Abu Dhabi, yes, Waterworld. Well, that's what I was going to yeah. say. When you go to Abu Dhabi, Warner so in Brothers. Dubai, you have all of these things. They're very, very crowded, right? There's traffic. When you go to Abu Dhabi, you've got Yas Island by itself. It's an island, right? It's got the arena on it which they have everything come through there. They had Hamilton, they have Comedy Festival, they have everything. They have Formula One in Abu Dhabi, not on Yas Island. On Yas Island, they've got SeaWorld indoors, all indoors. Warner Brothers theme parks, all indoors. They got Ferrari World. Is that indoors yeah, too? Yeah, yeah Ferrari is indoors. All, all indoors. Yas got Water World, I mean, that's the a Yas Water World. That's outdoors. Yeah, yeah but compared to going to the Atlantis in Dubai, I mean, there's a half an hour minimum wait per ride. Went to Yas Waterworld, it was packed out. Man, we barely waited five minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything yeah. is in one location. There's so many workers. Dude, the first time I Crazy. went there was in 2018 in October. So it was school time. It's the best experience. Wow, I can't right? imagine. We were yeah. just going on over again yeah, and again yeah. and again. And it was it's like absolutely... like having your own personalized water. It was. Yeah, it was yeah, great, yeah. right? It was fantastic, right? No, for um, sure. But see, that's the thing, right? So let's just say you wanted the beautiful villas of Dubai and you wanted the beautiful restaurants. They didn't want the traffic. Hey, you can go to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Right? Am I right or wrong? Abu, we were just there in Abu Dhabi a couple of weeks ago. Very clean. Honestly, I'd say cleaner than Dubai. Big roads, great facilities, a lot of locals. Yeah. You know, very conservative as well. Less not, westernized, yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we went to what? Yes, small. I would say, I mean, 75% of the people in there were locals. So you get that very Arab feel. It's a bit more comfortable, not too many people, you know, half naked or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but it's got amazing. We just said, the com he just said it, comedy festivals, Formula One, um, UFC fighting. We didn't even mention UFC. Yeah, yeah. Um, boxing events. Um, I think the NBA basketball is coming for a, um, uh, a demo. 
Uh, end of the year. Yeah, the space oh, they program. All Star thing yeah. last year, I think, right? Then they have the All Star. Yeah, NBA they did. Yeah, they were doing another one this year, it, but my, they're bringing an NBA game here. Yeah. My boy Eminem performed in Abu Dhabi one time. <laughs> <laughs> I was living in the states, and I swear I thought about coming. Well, Abu Dhabi is where the real wealth is. And the yeah, Fast and yeah, Furious, yeah. you know, went from one building to the other, and they didn't die. So and that was real. That so was yeah. Real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, so look, UAE is what you want it to be. If you, uh, I think, if you want the lifestyle. Dubai and Abu Dhabi is probably the way you go. If you want to save money, right? Um, if you're about saving, you've got a plan, you want to buy something, whatever, something like that. Maybe Sharjah and Ajman or, or, or um, Rak would be the best place. I mean, to me, to me, it all depends on mm. your employment, right? So if you're getting a job in Dubai, then to me, you should live in Dubai or Unless if you're it's not worker. too close. Yeah, we're talking about if you're physical, yeah, yeah. you have to go to work. You should be in Dubai or maybe even Abu Dhabi if you can find a place. I don't agree with the Sharjah thing, man. No. I go to Sharjah because I live mm. on the border, right? And so we go to Sharjah, mm. not often, but we go. Man, traffic is insane, dude. It's insane. And we're not talking like American and Australian traffic. You know, like, man, I'm sure in American Australia you get this road rage thing. So alhamdulillah, you don't have that road. You, you have road rage that nobody shows, right? <laughs> they're tailgating you. They're flashing your lights. They're honking. They're weaving in and out, all that kind of stuff. But for 60% they're not, they're save, not I'm, I'm, I'm 60% <laughs> save. Look, I look at it this way. I look at it this way. If you are earning killer money, right, or you have enough to give a comfortable life, Dubai is the way to go, or Abu Dhabi. The difference, I, th I think, is Abu Dhabi, though I actually – love Abu Dhabi it just takes longer to get to the other Emirates because it's at the south yeah. or right? not only right? to get to the other Emirates but also to do anything within Abu Dhabi yeah so uh, we so big. we it's went so to Abu big. Dhabi we went to yeah. Abu Dhabi together yeah. right when we went to the comedy festival and then the next weekend or actually the next day I went with my family and we mm. stayed for the weekend and dude I gotta tell you man it was so relaxing to just drive peacefully nobody was honking and flashing and it was just so nice man they're strict they're strict with their uh, they take a laws. lot of stress well yeah. yeah because whatever's the posted speed limit you go one kilometer over that you get a ticket here in dubai you got that 20 kilometer buffer but abu dhabi has also increased right so on the same road in dubai it's 120 as soon as you cross into abu dhabi it goes up to 140 40, yeah. Yeah. so it's the same speeds essentially but yeah they are they are more strict but man it was very very uh, stress-free in regards to the traffic mm. getting around you know going places and and like you said just seeing this more conservative lifestyle but at the same time when you wanted food you wanted to order you wanted to go to a restaurant it's not so close as it is here because Abu Dhabi Meshallah is big it's yeah. the biggest if you look at it on a map it's it is the huge. biggest yeah, so it's spread out you won't even see that many tall buildings there yeah, they don't need from, to yeah yeah because I have mean you think about land. it they don't need to yeah yeah Right, but so from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, like sorry, to say to Yas Island, right, where Warner Brothers, who for people that don't know where Warner Brothers is and whatnot, right, that's what an hour and say say an hour, right, from your house probably an hour, yeah, for an hour, yeah, from my yeah. house, right, yeah. so that's then, a lot of wear and tear on the car, man, yeah, especially but, at speeds, yeah, but then another twenty minutes to the airport, and yeah. then after that, right, is Abu Dhabi, so really it's about an hour and a half, so yeah. it's a lot of kilometers. It may not be. Some people might be like an hour and a half is not it's much. A, it is a lot of kilometers. That's a lot of kilometers because there's a big gap. But you know, have you noticed when as soon as you hit the border between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, maybe like 15, 20 minutes in, you start seeing standalone villas? And they're like, man, it's Abu Dhabi, but it's far. Like as in these villas are still far from the center of Abu Dhabi. Yeah, you know? yeah. So like it, like it goes But I think points. it's for people like trying to do what we're saying. Yeah. Live away from people. Away, not so expensive, but be in the middle, be able to travel yeah. to both. And, and, and yeah. But think, think is where, where I think with Shah just doing the right thing is they've now building all these communities not in the heart of Sharjah on the on the outskirts, the outskirts, on the outskirts yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. and and they're, they're, in a sense it's kind of mimicking what Dubai's done with Arabian ranches Damak Hills Dubai Arjan, Hills, JBC. Stuff, yeah all that stuff right yeah. and they're building them beautifully and now people go you know what I can buy a place in um, I can buy a three bedroom villa and it's only going to cost me two point something million dirhams. But it's brand new. And brand new. And it's big. Right. And it's in a community. And right? it's freehold. And it's then. freehold. Versus it's a Arabian ranches, which is costing six to seven million dirhams. So people are now starting. And look, I'll tell you something then. This is what is happening. It's been happening for the last three, four years. As the prices of Dubai is increasing, everywhere around the world is increasing. But as rents are increasing, schools are increasing, um, people... Uh, who were living in in certain areas are now being pushed out. Yeah, 
and they've gone to JVC, so JVC's gone up. Those people who lived in JVCs are moving to Mirdif and Dira. What's happening? Their prices are going up. Those people that were living in Mirdif and Dira and Silicon Oasis and uh, are going to either Dubai South or they're going to Sharjah. Yeah. Now Sharjah's going up in rent. Right? Yeah. So people who are now being pushed out of Sharjah are going to Ajman well, see, and Iraq. Well, see, the thing yeah. is, but see, despite that, so um, I was looking up some, some statistics today. Regardless of those increase of prices, the UAE is still, I mean, or I'll say Dubai specifically, it's still about 20 to 50% cheaper than most capital cities. So you're still paying a reasonable amount. And like, I mean, that's why people are willing to move out a bit further because it's... But I guess that's happening everywhere, right? It happens around the world. You know, I mean, most people live... You migrate, me. right? I call it my, migration. We just... Yeah. We say moving, but really it's migration, right? You yeah, move to yeah. whatever's your best circumstances. Yeah. So, look, Dubai is still probably the number one emirate, right? I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate from people from other emirates, <laughs> right? But the other emirates are clo make, uh, closing the gap. Abu Dhabi is definitely on the tail, yeah. On, uh, yeah. on Dubai. Sharjah's impressed me compared to where I saw it five years well, ago. I mean, Abu Dhabi's going right. to open 100 new schools in the next... Uh, yeah. One of our friends mentioned that yeah. in the next 10 years. I got lost That's one time in Abu Dhabi. I was, I was uh, there for a client. It was about two months ago. And it was dust storm. And I was, didn't have my GPS. I thought I knew how to get back. And I, I'm, I'm hopeless. I'm hopeless. <laughs> anyway, I got, lo I got lost. I, I knew straight away. And to get around, I had to go do a U-turn and the only way was to go on the street for 10 minutes. As you said, it's such a bit. I'm looking around going, wow, there's all these new villas that they're building. Beautiful communities. Yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see them. But yeah, to me, yeah. it's the yeah. old adage. If you build them, they'll, they'll come, come. Yep. right? I mean, if... And that's one thing, man, that I noticed when I first moved here because you talked about the 611. So when I first moved here, the 611 had just opened. I don't know when, maybe a mm. year before, two years. It was fairly new. The E11? Uh, no, the 611, the, the highway that goes to Sharjah. Right? It's Emirates Road. The, Emirates Road? Yeah. About Emirates Road? It's yeah. Emirates Road, right? Yeah, it's 611. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that highway is like six or seven lanes. And at that time, we were on it and it was empty. We had yeah, gone to the Sharjah yeah. Mosque, right? The biggest mosque in Sharjah. It's still empty, and, man. Yeah, exactly. So, but, they, but when you go on it, then you see they're building compounds or something. Yeah. To build. So, like, we'll build it. And then, as opposed in the US, if that was the US, they would have made a one or two lane highway. And then, as it got busy, expanded, you would have had to expand and sit yeah. in that traffic as they're expanding and blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, the infrastructure, the roads. In the UAE, I guess it's because there's no weather change, there's no snow, there's no salt, very, there's very no rain. Predictable. There's it's no potholes. There's no there's no cracks in the like. It's smooth riding everywhere yeah. you go. Um, and then you know the the only other thing I wanted to mention because you mentioned the dust storm mm. is that there is pollution in yeah. the UAE. Um, and Dubai, of course, has the highest pollution because of all the cars, the factories, the industrial areas, things like that. But they're working on that. Uh, they have a plan by 2030. They want to half half the emissions. From off the top of my head, so I mean they have a plan. They're working yeah. on green energy, but you can see it. Right? It's because, dusty. Like, yeah, it's I dusty. I live like maybe 20, 25 minutes right from the Burj Khalifa, and I can see it like from where I am because Dubai is flat. Yeah, yeah. So anywhere you are in Dubai, most likely you could see the Burj Khalifa. But there's many days where I'm like, I know it's over there, but I can't see it because it's dusty. Yeah, but after, if I was asthmatic, I, 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 you couldn't stay in Dubai. Well, that's what, what that's what I was going to yeah. tell you. So Dubai, the the rating for the air quality says not suitable for people with sensitive. Yeah, you know whatever issues or yeah, breathing yeah. issues or something. But like if you that. went to Rack or Fujira, well, Fujira you're on the water, right? You got right, fresh it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Year you can yeah. smell the difference. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So and you'll be the only one there smelling the difference. <laughs> the other thing is, man, yeah. is there's actually uh, something called a quality of life index, yeah. right? Um, and this index goes based on safety, based on cost of living, based on climate, based on so many different factors. And when it comes to that, Abu Dhabi beats Dubai by mm. more than twenty points. Wow. We're talking about one ninety six. For Abu Dhabi and 173. The probably the traffic. <laughs> for, for Dubai. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I could, I could go over the exact numbers, but the purchasing power is much stronger in, in, in Abu Dhabi, of course. Uh, safety is very similar. It's still higher in Abu Dhabi. Healthcare is better in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the climate, for some reason, is better in Dubai. I'm not sure why. It should be fairly similar. Yeah, because Abu Dhabi, just like Dubai, has major construction going on. Right. If you, you know, if you go through, see, when you're going through the night, you don't see it as much, right? But when you go th during the day, you see how much construction. It's dusty, right? It, like you said in Dubai, I look at it the same way when I see Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I can yeah. smell it yeah. in the air. Yeah. But I know that's temporary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, while I don't, I don't um, like I was in Ajman just a week ago. Right, because Crane, there's cranes it's, everywhere. It's cranes. It's it's. Yeah, but Dubai was cars. like that too when you guys. Yeah. I mean, when I first came in 2012, I think it was. You drive down Sheikh Zayed Road in a taxi. You're in a taxi 
in every way you look, I mean, uh, there was cranes everywhere. Like literally, there were more cranes yeah. than buildings, right? Yeah. Since I think you mentioned 50%. the cranes thing, yeah, 50%. I just I just looked it up with my. I told you I was with my boy a couple of days ago, so I just looked it up because you hear this stat thrown out about cranes all the time. So I went through four or five sources, man, because this stat is mind blowing. Twenty three percent of the world's cranes are in Dubai alone. Wow. Even now. Even now. That was from 2023 was the last update I found. Wow. By the way, there's an association that counts cranes. I forgot what it was called or whatever. <laughs> I swear to God, I found, I, I, but I went through so many. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. But dude, you're talking about almost one fourth of the world's things that, in Dubai. Karim, that's, the kid that like, like, in yeah. 2013 or 2014, it was 50%. Yeah. 50%. Yeah. Imagine half of anything yeah. anywhere in the world. That's crazy. That is so crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, even if I read the stat and it was 5 or 10%, that would be mind-blowing. Yeah. Because right? you're talking about like... We're talking, about, we're talking a population of 3 million. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a, a size of a, maybe a city in yeah. the US. Yeah. But I wonder what the population in Dubai is at all times. Because 3 million. I, you just said that, so I wouldn't say yeah. that. You, you know, yeah. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Only three million at any one time. No, I'm saying there's three million residences. Yeah, 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 but yeah, how yeah, many yeah, visitors are here? Oh, that's how yeah. Many, yeah. That's a lot more. Yeah, yeah so, particularly yeah. in the winter time. Is there twenty million now? Fifteen? No, no. Per year, maybe per Seems year. Like, are you talking about yearly or talking about just? No, in I'm one saying time. like at any one time. No, 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 I don't think no. so. No. In fact, so. summertime is the quietest time. Yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. Yeah, 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 of course. He's not uh, average, whatever. No, but I read, I read a stat that they want to double the population by 2040. No, that's what, so. they, that's what they're planning to, yeah. right? That's, what, that's their plan. That's why a lot of the oh, infrastructure God, that you see. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of the infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the good thing about the, good thing about the RTA and the, the, the Dubai government and all the other governments is they're not like, if I look at, and sorry, Australian government, right? Or well, New South Wales government. If I look at the New Please South let him Wales, back in. <laughs> if I look at the New South Wales government as an example back home, there's not a lot of great planning. Not at all. And and it's debated upon debated upon debate. You know, and each yeah. government, I'm going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. No, I'm going to do it. No, I'm going to not do it. Right? The UAE, because it's you know it's a benevolent dictatorship ruled by uh, the sheikhs here, each one can say this is what we're doing. Yeah. There's no debate. Yeah. I mean, they changed right? the weekend in a, in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? There's no debate. We once it, once it's done, that's it. We're going to uh, fund it. We just woke up and the first, like next week it's uh, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the new rule. Every time it's a new ruling from this date, blah, it's happening. Okay? Yeah. And the people are like, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, the right? visa, right? They got rid right. of the 10-day ga- ten ten day grace period just recently. Yeah, they did. No one even knew. Yeah, they did. No one even knew. They're just like, that done. Or well, even, even, <laughs> even the Oman run. They're, yeah, stop they're, yeah. they're stopping it. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can, I think it's only once or twice. I, right, I, right, right, right. They're and putting new it. restrictions. Because yeah. they, they want to control. They want right. to know who's coming and going. Yeah, right? yeah. No, they want people to be... To spend money and get your visa get and your stay proper and visa feel and permanent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Um, Good point. So... Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he said it to me, not you. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as I said, so the governments here, the, the rules here are because they're, they're family inherit. The, the, the right, right, right. So they can make plans for the next 50 years, yeah. 100 years, yeah. right? And they know. So here's the vision. They want to double the population, right? Well, let me ask right? you, man. But, see, but you that's ever... an advantage of a royal family, right? Like, uh, I'm not a trying to... A benevolent yeah, royal correct. family. I'm not trying to bag yeah. out the West, man, but you can't get nothing done in politics these yeah, days. Yeah. He knows that. I mean, yeah. I don't agree. I'm not going to talk about things, but Trump wanted to build a, uh, a wall. He couldn't get it done, man. The yeah. president couldn't get it done because there's too many hoops, too much red tape. Here, if they want to build the wall, man, they'll start tomorrow. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. They, they, so, I mean, in a way, it's good. And, you know, obviously... Look, it costs... Look, with security and, and with one ruler, you know, you do give up some personal freedoms. And that's something you have to be real... You have to really be... Especially for you guys. I mean, you, you know, it's all this, you know, freedom of speech and, you know, my rights and all that stuff. Here, you have less rights, but you get more security, better infrastructure, safety... It's everything's clean. Yeah, but I, um, even these less rights things, man. I hate when people I say think that because it sounds so bad. Like, oh, you don't have any rights. To me, the only rights that I see that are impeded upon would be this like freedom of speech to go out and talk against Islam or against the government. Yeah, or talk which, about a specific individual. No, but they give an example. I can, in the States, I can film you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But here, that, I'm saying that's a great law to have. It, that here you it, can't it, film without but, permission. But... If you were in the States or in, Amer- in Australia or in Western, they would say, that's my right to film you. I understand. But that's right? what I'm saying. When people yeah. talk about the UAE and say, oh, you don't have rights. What rights don't you have? Yeah. No, we have you rights. You don't have this? So we don't, we have, no, no, no. That's yeah, not what I we mean. We have less, like, not as the same. Okay, I would say this. Not to say, and I agree with you. doesn't mean those rights are right. 
right? It just means that the right of uh, freedom of expression. Or they're not that damn important, right? man. Even the three of us, man, alhamdulillah, with this podcast, mm. we've talked off, you know, off air. That sounds cool. We've talked <laughs> off air before about like, hey, man, you guys want to discuss this topic or this topic. And we've said amongst ourselves, like, hey, guys, if we talk about this, we're going to have to center ourselves a little yeah, bit. Yeah. We can't really dabble in this. We can't uh, but say we this thing. But respectful, right? Of course. More than anything but that is such a small... It's not even a price to pay. But, but if you're coming from America, right, and you're out every Saturday protesting this and this parade and this and that, and you think you're going to come to the UAE and do that, or you're going to be able to go online and put on your Instagram this and this and this, no, you can't do that. Or put that. a camera in front of a police officer and say, I'm filming you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah not you can't do that. Or, yeah, well, that's well, I, have seen them, I have seen them film police, but only in good situations. And they're so good. Yeah, yeah. so but nice. I've seen videos where it goes wrong. Let me ask right. you guys, man. You guys have been here, alhamdulillah, for a few years. We visited for a long time. You know, a lot yeah. of people in the Emirate. Have you ever heard someone say that they're not happy in Dubai? No. Or have you ever heard someone say, I'm going back home because of something? It happens. At, look, I've regarding the people, country. Look, I've known a few people who have gone like they've been here for 10, 15 years. Yeah, right? And they're like, uh, it's time to go back. We've had enough. Right. Some people might say, hey, look, I miss the greenery. I miss the scenery. I miss, miss going out to Native like this. I have had people. I've had, I have met a few people who just did, who didn't like it, couldn't adjust to it. Um, from what aspect? Because, okay, uh, so, I yeah. mean, I'll talk from my I mean, Please, alhamdulillah, yeah. I'm very happy. Like, we're very happy being the family. But when you first come, it is hard to make friends yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, of A course. lot of people, like, for example, let's say you go in the, the work environment is not what you what they promised, a bit toxic. Yeah. Then, I mean. Yeah, no, yeah, you, yeah. But this is, that's this is, that's is a, yeah. yeah, but I'm talking about the Emirate itself. This is job related, right? No, but like, some people okay. struggle. You know how, you know how you said you hate when people say it's not natural. I hate that too. Yeah. Because what is natural unless you're going to live in a rainforest, right? Right. Yeah, or live, like live right. But in some a, people like to go to the bush or yeah, the mountains correct. or to uh, go on bike trails or whatever. Stuff like, like some that. people, yeah. some we people have on, all that, by the way, everything yeah, you know, just but, said. Right, but some people on the, on some of the groups, I don't want to name the groups on Facebook. Oh, I miss an Aussie kebab. I just roll my eyes. You know, it's like, Okay, I miss, I don't know, Vegemite. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, I understand, I understand. But what I'm saying, nobody said I'm leaving Dubai because I can't handle yeah, yeah, so, uh, the discrimination. Uh, or I can't oh, no, handle... No, 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 no. So I'll tell no, you this. No. Maybe oh, the yeah. heat. Yeah, but yeah. look at this. It's normally a, heat, desert, yeah. family, you know, whatever. No, normally it's one of those but even factors, working toxic conditions work environment. Could be, yeah, toxic. That, yeah. And that's an important one. If you come from the West, right, there are clear HR guidelines on how you can treat. Clear what it, guidelines? HR. H. You say H. <laughs> H. H. We say H. Oh. <laughs> we actually pronounce the H. You <laughs> pronounce the H. It sounds like you say H. One of the few words we get right. Right. <laughs> right. So we. So an example is so we had a friend. I had a friend of mine who came from UK. Uh, here, he went and worked in a um, Korean company, South Korean company, and within three months, three or four months, couldn't take it because the way that the managers and the people talking to, particularly, unfortunately, this is the downside is, is that. Here in the UAE, there are so many nationalities, right? When you go to the Mer when, you go, when people come immigrate to the US or to Australia, they're expected to conform to the US way of life, right? Or the, or the Australian integrate, yeah. right? Here, you don't have to. If you're from Pakistan, you can stay and, and act as a Pakistani. If you're from the uh, Philippines, you can stay. If you're from the States, you don't have to adjust. You just have to obey the laws, right? So some people, unfortunately, can't are up racist and can't take seeing certain you know nationalities or you know or they don't like or they're not used to it. And so I've, I, there was someone I you know I wasn't impressed with what he said because I just didn't like a particular nationality or well, too I mean, many of them. Yeah, I mean, but that's ignorance on their yeah, part. I know, but right? I, know, I know someone that was like, oh, I can't handle that. The nannies, the nannies get paid this much, or the cleaner gets paid that much, or my coworker. Because I'm Australian or whatever, I get paid this much. But my coworker, because he's Pakistani, gets paid you know fifty percent of what I get paid. I couldn't handle the yeah. unfairness. I mean, look, yeah. fair enough for them, I guess. But I mean, I, I don't look at it that way. I look at it that you know, you, I mean, you control your own value. But I mean, some people I've heard that you know, and even like um, they feel like people are not authentic. They're just out to make um, money, use you. You know, I mean, like I said, I've not experienced that at all. Wallahi, not even once anything like that. But then again, I don't work here. So I yeah. just live here. So, I mean, I guess my circumstances are different. But I mean, a lot of our friends... Never? What is it? You've never met anyone who just had enough? 
want no, to get back man. to the home no, countries? Man. And if I do, I'm trying to convince them otherwise. I mean, the thing that you said about it being fake here, this is one thing. Like, oh, I live in Dubai. Oh, it's so fake. And my next question is like, what does that mean? Oh, they, they just build, build buildings and they just... Like, that's what you do. That's you build. Un, that's that a building is real. Engineering. The greenery that yeah. they're putting in the desert is real greenery. It's not yeah. like we've planted fake flower. Like, this bush yeah. here is fake. <laughs> it's not like we're putting a whole bunch of those just to make it look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't agree with that, that it's, that it's fake. Yeah, there's this thing, man, when you're in Dubai, there's this status and there's like a competition sometimes because everybody has money and you have to show your money. Like, I saw this video of uh, a guy. I think I told you guys, but this guy coming out of a party. Right. And he's filming all the cars that are here in Dubai. He's filming all the cars and they're all like G wagons and Lambos and whatever. But they all have the single digit plates. Right. And then he goes to his. I think it was uh, it was either a, uh, a, a Bentley or Bugatti. I, I know those are way different, but I can't remember. But he shows his car and it's got the regular five numbers. He's like, I'm the poor one here. You know, when like you're super rich, mashallah, like you have that nice car, but yeah. you just didn't but the go license spend place up. is more is uh, well, worth more than the car. Well, the reason is right is yeah. because everybody can buy a Lambo. So driving a Lambo, and we actually rented, we actually rented, uh, you know, sports cars a couple of times, and we went and drove around. Nobody bats an eye. Nobody looks at you. Nothing, <laughs> right? If I was in America, man, and I was driving that car, especially in my city where nobody has them, dude. And I have before. I told you guys, man. My boy had a G wagon. I was driving it. Talking about I the go. girls doesn't care about the guys. No, nah, I don't care about the guys. I don't care if about the guys, guys are looking at you, you're about to get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, but the the other thing that uh, people say is this whole work thing, the thing that you touched on about the the pay and the this gets paid less and this gets paid this and this. And even when you hire people, man, you go on a website and if you want to hire an African, it's this price and a Filipino, it's this price, blah, blah. It seems, right, like on the face of it, it seems unfair, right? Um, but my rebuttal to that is what country are you from? Is your country allowing these people to come, right? No. Your, my country has closed the borders and doesn't want anybody to come and you got to go through hoops and this and this and this Correct. and this, right? To get through there. But hey man, these people from this country want to work. And the UAE said, come and work and we'll pay you a wage that's comparable to what you make in your country. And that's what makes the UAE but, work. But and nobody's missing... forced. I'm so sorry, real no, quick, sorry. just to say this because everybody uses, I don't even want to say the word, man, but everybody uses this word that it's slave labor, slave uh, trade. That that Nobody what, forced anyone to truth. come. And they're they still earning the job ten, and they come. And they're still earning ten times than what they're earning back no, home. No, but also you guys gotta realize. Ten times. But uh, can I say something else? I know yeah. you've been with the I have met so kind of I have met like um I met this uh, uh Filipino who was a mate, right? And she says in the ten years that she was here in Dubai, she was supporting her family and bought two houses. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. who can buy two houses not in, not in on the their salaries? Even in your home country. In the home country. Even in your home and country paid off, good wages. Paid off. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yes, they may be getting a lot less than um, than other people in, in the UAE. But they're they're earning ten times more yeah. than that their but, uh, but, their their home country. But Timmy, what we're forgetting is a lot of the, all of these nationalities, their governments have negotiated minimum standards with the UAE government. Correct. So when you do your visa for your nanny, the Filipino government, for example, says the nanny has to get a minimum of this much per month. Yeah. You know, she so has to have her you own can, room. She correct. has to have this. You cannot yeah. pay her less than that. Right. Yeah. So if her government is happy for her to receive that, who, like who are we to say, oh, we're underpaying them? No, sorry. And if he or she decided to leave their country, leave their family on their own accord, uh, you can't say yeah, that no that's forced, forced labor, come, nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no, I, look, I, I think I think where they where they say haters, slave, man, effing haters. I'm getting upset just thinking about. Yeah, it. I, swear so to God, I don't too. like it. I get it from Australia, right? I get yeah. it from my friends. Ah, oh, Dubai is slave labor. We'll say, well, you know, we're, we're, okay. If they were not here, or in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, Kuwait, Singapore, Malaysia, whatever, stuff, where would they go to work? Right. Because you're, as you said, you're not letting no, them in. But Timmy, yeah. it gets no, but it gets worse. People cannot even so. 30% of Australians are renters, okay? 30%. I just saw it this week. They cannot afford to buy. No one wants to rent if they can afford to buy. Mm. So these people are earning in Australia. I'm just going to talk about Australia because I know the statistic. They're not earning enough, okay, to buy a house. I mean, in a way, isn't that considered slave labor too? They've only got enough to rent. I mean, I'm not saying slave labor. You know and they're what probably, I mean. It's, if they can't afford to buy and they're renting, yeah, they're, they're probably barely, barely getting, getting by. by. They ain't saving. They're yeah. not putting anything so in their bank. if your nanny bought two properties, 
they can't even buy on one bloody salary and sometimes husband and wife both working they're barely getting by imagine we go so, to the Philippines and found she just bought like two small ass shacks <laughs> I saw this I saw this we've been quoting no, no, and talking no, no, about no, no, her for okay, I saw this really cool picture right it was uh, I think it was on um, Instagram uh, no Facebook where it says worker in Dubai and he's full helmet you know construction then when he's back home in his village he's in the mac daddy suit <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, in the yeah. dirt village right because he's classified that he or she will be classified as well off uh, yeah. to, to, right? you, know, you know in morocco you yeah. can buy my friend i'm going to morocco in a couple of days my friend purchased a brand new unit in fess that's the heart one of the main three cities in morocco 10 minutes away from the heart of fess for $30,000 American, brand new with a view. Wow. So if you're a Moroccan working here, you can buy a house within three or four years, a mm. unit. You can buy multiple if you're here for 10, and we're not, years. And we're not talking about put a down payment and start making payments. We're talking about no, have no, the whole 30000 and yeah, buy cash. cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lebanon, $20,000 American will get you a brand new unit, right? So imagine you're here for a couple of years. There's some Lebanese here making 30000 dirham a month. They can never get that. I mean, there's Lebanese that have sold their properties in Lebanon use the American dollars, okay, bought in Dubai so that they can live off the rents. Yeah. Because the dirham is a better currency than the lira in Lebanon, right? The liras, I mean, it's worth nothing now. You know, might as well not even go to work. So, I mean, I don't consider it, I mean, it's extremely, like, I don't know if the word is prejudicial, but it's completely unfair to say that because yeah, they're yeah. getting a living wage and actually more than a living wage. And yeah. the UAE Well, nobody hoping... says that in yeah. Dubai, right? Those no, are no, all no. haters outside, outside of the UAE yeah. that say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to say because... I'm sure you they... heard it when we're at the World Cup. How many comments did you say? Oh, yeah, they oh, built that God. stadium. Yeah, yeah. You know, Slave labor. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, if they didn't, right, these people would have been in their home country, hungry, unemployed. Well, that's the right. thing right. I was going to tell you. Yeah. As I've talk, I, when I first moved here, uh, I, I don't know why, we used to take Uber fairly frequently. I mean, alhamdulillah, we only have one car and so whatever. Um, I think because I had a lot of paperwork and things to do and I was going back and forth to all these different facilities. So I used to always ask the drivers, how much are you getting paid? What is it like? Blah, blah, blah. And what I found is that if I lit, worked in my country, I could possibly, maybe, make half of this amount. But that's if I had a full-time job. There's no such thing as a full-time job. Right? We're talking about for these laborers, mm. right? construction workers, whatever. You might work two days and then have the rest of the month off. You might finish a project and then not find anything for whatever, yeah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Sure. Here, yeah, you work hard, you whatever, but like, what is the goal? What is the goal? Right? It's, it, okay, it, but see, the Australian dream, the American dream, the UK dream, illusion. the Canadian dream, the New Zealand dream, it's dead. Yeah. I, I've no, actually, I, think it's, I think it's not dead, dude. It's no, but a, it's not. It's an illusion. Illusion, thank it's, you. It's a way to imprison you into debt. Correct. Right? Because you go to school... Right, so yeah. there's right, and then what's it? What's the, what's the push? You have to go to university, right? College. All right, Timmy, right? Timmy, Timmy. And that costs this much say money. You're, okay, say you were born twenty years ago. Okay, you're twenty. You're eighteen. Now. <laughs> he was fifty. Eighteen, 18 years, years ago. ago. Wish I was. <laughs> okay. You go to uni, right? Assume yeah. you want to get an education. What's that one? Debt. Yeah. You want to buy a car? What's unless you live, unless you work, or you've got a rich family. Okay, I'm, forget that. We're yeah. saying you want to make your own way in the world. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're about forty thousand in debt by okay. the time you come out. All right. And they say it's not a loan system, but it gets indexed every year. So you yeah. you told me if it's not a loan system, you want to get a car. I mean, unless it's a little crappy five hundred dollar car. Well, how are you going to get it? Yeah, you have to get finance. Yeah. Finance. You want to buy a house? How are you going to get it? Yeah, married. Even getting married, okay. it costs right. money. Yeah. Even even okay. Having forget, kids. Forget marriage. Say you rent a house. You want to buy all your furniture from, let's say, Harvey Norman, mm. whatever. The, the yeah, yeah, they have, of yeah, yeah. Harvey Norman, or all of your appliances from wherever, Bingley. Everybody's lot, offering payments. Zero percent interest up. free or some sort of interest it's, free. It's all a slave. It's debt. all a slave. Yeah. It's all a slave. This is what I'm saying. The West, unfortunately, when they say that they're free, but it's an illusion of freedom. Yeah, but you spend 25 years of your good years getting out of debt, and then it's like, man, I'm in my 40s. Okay, I'm still relatively healthy, but I mean, you might die after 15, 20 years, man. Well, especially we took the vaccine. You guys have credit <laughs> credit ratings in Australia? Yeah, yeah. So we, we also have that in the US. That's not something here in the UAE. They don't have that. Yeah, here. they do. They have a credit rating? Yeah, yeah. If you want to go and apply for a loan, they yeah. take yeah, your yeah, credit. They, 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 they do. do. It's not as complicated. They and they can use the, it. Uh, you can actually go online and go to Etihad um, credit system. Yeah, it? I think so. Right? Yeah. And you can. But, but they may not have a lot of information. That's on what I'm you. saying. It's not as comprehensive. Right? Australia, we have a comprehensive. Credit right. reporting system. Yeah. But if you have so, a credit card yeah. here, you'd be on on, on, it, on, yeah. on the system. I think if you're renting, you, you, you're on the system. Maybe. Gotcha. Um, I think it's Dewa mostly, bill. It's Dewa Dewa bill. Yeah, I was going to say. Dewa bill, Dewa do bill. And, uh, and all that. Phone bills, yeah. That's all on your um, credit score. Credit score. Yeah. Right? Okay. But for example, okay, 
let's say you decided to move to Ajman. We already spoke about the prices. For $100,000 American, say 150, add the stamp duty, whatever, little bits and pieces, you can buy a three or four bedroom home. No, you could buy a five bedroom. I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm could being very five, conservative here. Let's say, okay, yeah. let's just say, let's say for comfortably 275, 300,000 US dollars, you can buy yourself a five bedroom villa Beautiful, standalone. Okay, I just doubled what he said, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but I said five bedroom. Yeah, but he said 100 <laughs> to 150, you could buy a three. I'm giving him yeah. exactly you doubled and you went to five. Man. You're right. out to years. All right. Jeez. And then, then you're in a conservative. That's, that's the thing. If you're a conservative Christian, the UAE is a great place to move. Oh, big time. Okay, if you're conservative Hindu, I don't know, whatever. I mean, uh, uh, don't, I don't, do know. don't do uh, it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't say it. <laughs> no, not that one. Another one. Um, you know, so I Buddhist. mean, that's yeah. what you meant, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Buddhist. Yeah, Buddhist. That's the one. I swear to God, that was it. Buddhist. Um, if you're a Mormon, I mean, man, you can't get better than that. Imagine you're we list hundred religions and we leave that one out. <laughs> you got all the malls. You got great schooling. Safe, no racism. Service, yeah. They also have their uh, their places of worship here too. Yeah, there's yeah, temples yeah. and churches. Which which I know a lot of people outside the UAE criticize. I actually do not criticize. I think it's a great initiative. That's right. Because everyone has a right to worship the, what they want to worship in Islam. There was churches in the Prophet's time. Okay, there was you know all different types of places of worship. There Obviously, still are yeah. in Egypt. There's Churches, the churches uh, are way Jordan, nicer than the mosques you know? in Egypt. Yeah, it's I mean, but shame. they're ancient. Yeah. It's such a shame. But they're ancient and well looked after. I mean, look at Spain. Have you, have you guys ever been to Spain? If you go to a lot of the churches there, you'll see little uh, uh, they memories and symbols of mosques. You yeah. know, like you'll see it in little corner, Allahu Akbar. Oh wow! Piece of the Fatiha, but they weren't like they, they couldn't. They tried to get rid of it during the Inquisition. They couldn't get rid of it. Now it's been like heritage listed and it wow. can't be changed. That's cool. Yeah, because they're re reflecting on the yeah, yeah. Spain was uh, all Islam back yeah. in the day before. The I mean, Inquisition. Islam teaches that you don't force your religion on on Not anyone. anyone. No compulsion. Uh, if you religion. if you live in uh, an Islamic society, then you just follow the Islamic rules. But you're free. Lakum dinukum wal yadin. We have our religion. Well, you have yours. You, you know what I love? You know, it's funny. You know yeah. the taxes in Islam. If you are a non-Muslim, all you'd have to do if you wanted to live in a Muslim land is pay a small amount of tax. It's like a fixed fee. I know obviously now it's different compared to the Prophet's time. And you'd be able to live. You, they wouldn't be taxing you at 40 or 50% and taxing you for that and taxing you for you know, yeah, <laughs> all yeah. these different things. Actually, if you're a billionaire, come here, man. You're going to get a much fairer deal than anywhere else. Oh, yeah. look, it's interesting. That's why I said everything about the West is about enslaving the population to be workers and to keep you working until you retire. And that's why they're pushing the retirement Make this guy viral what he said, please. It, we it, it negative comments, we want to see. We're pushing Share the retirement it with all your friends. Like that's it. It. Think about this right now. You, you talked about 75. <laughs> Imagine now they want you to work until you're 75 years old. Yeah. Right? 75. Yeah. Right? And the way that they tax you. Do you have it to work for another 10 years? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Tim is already 100, man. He's still worked 110. I don't, I don't know, man. I, look, I, look, I do like working. I was trying to say you were 65. I do like... I, <laughs> it went right over your balls. I'm not. Right. Maybe just reflected. <laughs> he's, got the heart, he's got the heart right. and the body of a 30-year-old. Yeah, right? <laughs> feel bad for that My wife would say I'm still, a I'm still a kid, right? Uh -huh. um, nice. At heart. Look, Is that what she sees you naked? Oh, at heart. Okay. <laughs> uh, I get it. Um, if you think about it this way, in the West, right? There's taxes on the money you earn. Right, and the company that paid you that money is also taxed. Yeah. Then when you get that money, right, and you go to buy things, you're taxed. Yeah. Right. The company that took that money is also taxed. Correct. All right? of that is okay with me if you saw the results. And sure. you don't. If you saw you the yeah, damn you results, if you had Canadian good countries. schools, no, if you had good Sweden. infrastructure, if you had safety, if the police were doing but their Karim, job. You have that in Sweden, in Hungary. I understand. In, in I understand. these countries you have it. Why in the West we cannot have it? They are I West. don't know. No, no, I know. There's social, democ the social democracy. No, yeah. but I think Switzerland, uh, maybe it's Sweden. I have a couple of... Um, might be oh. Swa Swahili. I don't know. No. <laughs> no, but the taxes are as high as 60%. But everything is for free. And it's not just for free. Like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, but universities are free. Yeah, but that's what I'm you saying. Know? But it's good. I think no, well, I was going to say it's quality. Top quality. Top yeah, quality. Yeah, you know, yeah. teachers have to be in... in, in uh, I can't remember which we do. They have to be almost like getting a master's yeah, yeah. to get teachers. He, in the West, like in Australia, in the US, man, in England... 21-year-old can be teaching a 17-year-old. You might just score so 60% hot. a D student. <laughs> you're you a 17-year-old, yeah. You can become a, <laughs> you can become a, teacher, a teacher with a, and you're a D student. Yeah. Yeah. Right? 
This is how bad oh, the, the grade quality. D. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Right? Sorry, sorry. I just said <laughs> so hot, my mind went somewhere else. I'm so sorry. I'm so right? sorry. But that's what it is. The quality of teaching in the West has, is, but in, in those Scandinavian countries, they're still highly respected and you still have to score, but they pay you very well we to be a teacher. We get paid so little in the Yeah, US. I've heard. So look, little. I'll tell you something. In Australia, at least our teachers are fairly paid. Oh, I paid look, well. I get in the US, I hear horror stories yeah, of teachers having American, to get a second job. This is, this is true. Second job. This, what yeah. you said. Yeah. You start off in the, in the 30s. Yeah. If you break 40, it's like, it's, I don't want to say it's unheard of, but it's, it's not common. I would, say, I, would say, I would say equivalent to the Australian, Australians are probably on, if a starting teacher for, in the US, 45, 50. Yeah, about 40. It's about 40. Depending 40, on yeah. public yeah. or private, private's a bit higher because they charge 45, you know, school fees. Yeah. yeah. But for example, and I've you're got, right. A lot of teachers do get second I mean, and third yeah, jobs. Yeah, second and third jobs. I, I do the taxes and accounting for a couple of ex-teachers, and they've been working for about 15 years, and they're earning about 100 grand American. Oh wow, 110 yeah. grand. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, it's a yeah. great wage. It's oh, nice. really, really good. Oh, so nice. it's more than enough to buy a house. But that's the point. Put your kids through uni, you know. Get All right, so we're changing. <laughs> Screw UAE. Move to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but I'm going to say, but the, we have the same. We have the, a similar challenge. Is you know, is is the taxes going into like my wife is there right now and she's been there for like three weeks and she said, Tim, the infrastructure has gone downwards, yeah. it's boring, it's dull, it's, it's, um, you can tell there's potholes in the road. Like they've got one event now. You tell visit. me, do you see potholes in the road in the UAE? No, never. That's if what they, I was just if it, Even when the floods happened, there wasn't right? They, as soon as it dried up, they were working on the roads to fix yeah, it yeah. immediately. Yeah. Right? We had two sinkholes happen, man, on that road behind my house. Huge sinkholes, dude. Yeah, because in the, the rain, road, the right? Yeah. And no, it, was, uh, it wasn't even during the storm. This was like oh. uh, when my parents were here. Okay. And we were walking to a restaurant and there was like a huge hole. So I took my dad and my daughter and we went and walked really close to it. Like not, I was super yeah. nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could look into the hole and it was just hollow for as far as the eye can see. Wow. It was crazy. But within a couple of days, it was fixed. Like immediately they put cones around it, called the company, whatever, boom, they came and fixed it. And it happened again and they fixed it even faster that time because, you know, yeah. They, yeah. They, they knew what was going so on. So here it's a little bit different. There's no, I mean, there's no direct tax, right? And that's like uh, your salary taxes. Yeah, but right? the property sector here but, props up the government, tourism. Yeah, but there's a lot well, of that. Tourism is the yeah. biggest thing. I mean, but that's why that the ruler... Right? Well, that's why the ruler did what he did, right? It's yeah. like, hey, we're not going to be able to live off of oil forever the way Abu Dhabi is, mashallah. Um, so we need to stimulate the economy. How are we going to do that? Yeah, if we build the tallest building, people will come. If we have the biggest mall, which by the way, did you hear that Ahmad is going to spend 400 million US dollars to add like Even over bigger. 250. I just don't know where they're going to build that. Higher? I, I don't I, I have no idea. Maybe higher. Or maybe they just buy out the other places around it. Yeah, but they're all buildings. Yes, they're yeah, them down. huge buildings. Yeah, they will. They do knock them down here. There's yeah, no but how could that be worth it? But anyway, anyway. I think they'll go up. Though. But they'll right? just they'll just continue. You know, they expanded the Nakhil part. What is it called? No, not Nakhil. Uh, Fashion Avenue. No, no, no. Not. What's the one across the street? Oh, uh, yeah. That's also Dubai Mall. Yeah, I know. But, wait, side, but they has a different name for it. Fashion. Sorry. No, 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 no. I feel like it starts with an N. But anyway, and? they expanded it across the street, like across right, the yeah. highway. Yeah. And so you walk on a bridge that crosses over. Yeah. Now there's like a whole nother mall, bigger than any mall in the U.S. Yeah. And it's just an add-on to this mall. That wasn't enough. Now they're going to add 240, they said, high-end stores and restaurants. Like, well, it's the, visit, the most visited place on earth is Dubai Mall, which is crazy. When I read that stat, I had to do a double take. Yeah. Are you sure? I've Matt, never seen it not busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, never. I've never, never. Even coming early in the morning. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Man. Right? It's Within crazy. the first hour, it's busy. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's the aquarium, right? I mean, a lot of people love the novelty of the American chains. There's the Cheesecake Factory, there's TGI Fridays. We don't get those yeah, yeah. back home. Yeah. Um, there's the fountains, which obviously is the number one attraction. You've got the beautiful, Burj Khalifa. Beautiful. You've got amazing restaurants. I'm not, I'm not going to, it's not a corniche, but you could pretty much say on, on the water. On the water, on the fountain, yeah. yeah on the so fountain. Nice. And you've got all of the beautiful buildings by Ahmad around there and by the Mac and. Fancy and then any brand places, yeah. that wants a name for itself goes there and opens, yeah. right? Like you, you, you even have companies that have not even opened another chain, an, another location in their own home, mm. and they'll come and open here. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. we have two locations: one in the U.S., like one in our hometown, and then one in Dubai. I mean, it's exposure. You know? if, if everyone in the world. I mean, not everyone in the world, right, but right. if the most visited place on earth is there, you just want exposure for your brand. Yeah. You want people to like, oh yeah, I remember that brand from Dubai Mall. You're not going to forget an experience to Dubai, especially if you're only going to come once or twice. Yeah. 
So Dude, I've been to that mall over 50 times and I haven't I seen love every part I love of it. it. Oh, no, no, I, love I still it. haven't seen every I'm part of it. I'm probably the only one. I hate going what? to that mall. But I hate malls, period. Now, see, I know right? that mall inside out. I'm like a pro for Dubai mall. I know all the parking. I know all the loopholes in and out. I, can't I know stand. everything. I know where That's the awesome. Is. That's yeah. awesome. I Especially <laughs> nighttime. I can't stand going in the nighttime. Look, don't go on parking is, don't go uh, on is, 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 is Come a, on, man. You pay 200 for valet. Trump up for some valet parking. We'll ride with Ali. We'll ride with Ali. No, I've done that. Look, one time I went, I I took my son to the movies. We got meeting up another family. And I don't know why. It was just so damn busy. And we're just trying to find parking. Eventually, I went, screw this. Went to valet. Paid the the 150 dirhams. And then ran... You know, of course, unfortunately, from ballet to where the cinema was, yeah. it's on the other side. But even around there, man, they've got the ice skating rink. They've yeah, got all yeah. these kids' places, kids' Zania. Kids Zania just about Look, to I will say there. this. Dubai, the cinema's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Dubai, Abu Trampo, Dhabi. Trampo Extreme. Even Sharjah, their malls are fun. Yeah, they are. In the sense for kids. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And because, guess what? It's a hot country. Well, you know what? They even so have these places which... I don't know if I've seen them in the US. They might be there. I'm not sure. But like a drop and play where you can like yeah. drop your See you later. Off, See you later. Right? I mean, yeah. honestly, even if they had those places in the US, I, I don't know how many them. Americans no, would trust no, it. No, but no, I right? did here. But here, you can you, you trust it. <laughs> have you ever gone to IKEA? Yeah, I have. I have. I've done the drop off. <laughs> At IKEA? Yeah. They have it inside that, IKEA? Yeah. Oh, wow. They have no, a, an IKEA drop off, dropped off the little kids. He right? didn't even shop at Ikea. Right? He no, went home. <laughs> he went, he Actually, went home. <laughs> I had done that though too. Because uh, Ikea is in uh, what, Festival City. Festival Dubai City, yeah. Festival City. Nice Dubai mall Festival. too. Yeah, no, that's a nice mall. Very mall. underrated yeah. mall. Yeah. Very, very yeah, yeah. Underrated, yeah. underrated mall. Festival that's City. That's got Bounce. Yeah. You know the Bounce? Have uh, you been to Bounce there for the kids? No. You, your kids could spend all day. There's like three sections. Yeah. One for the little kids, one for the trampoline area. One. Oh no, I did go. I did go. It's beautiful. I did go. I remember. It has a cafe right in the front. Yeah, that's the one. I just sat at the cafe the whole time. Did you see next to it? There's a venture park and then there's like another just on the way there's all these little things for the kids to play and they're with. always they're changing the outside more. area that's on yeah. the water they're always doing different like bazaars and little you know uh, that's why I say yeah, the, fountain, there's little mini the UAE is yeah. kind of being yeah. built with the family in mind yeah right so it's definitely a family friendly place absolutely but even if you don't have a family like it's, it's an amazing place too like, yeah absolutely like I mean I mean, if well, you're look, a foodie, the, imagine you're a foodie. But you know, in the UAE, seventy percent of the population is men. Thirty over thirty thousand restaurants. So what is it? It's in the in the UAE. Seventy <laughs> percent. What the hell to listen? Seventy percent of the population is men. In the UAE? Male. Yeah, yeah, it's male. Really? Yeah, yeah, thirty percent. I see more female. girls than guys here. I'm surprised. So when I tell my wife that I need a second wife, this is proof. <laughs> yeah, but not here. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> too many men here. Oh no, too many men. Oh, There's too, too many, many men. men. Oh, God. Look at the other she'll, way, she'll make the argument yeah. on the other side. Oh crap! Oh crap! <laughs> um, right, there's a lot more men here, so I would say if you're an ex, if you were living here on your own, you yeah you can meet somebody, but you might struggle. I guess that's because a lot of yeah. workers are coming, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, of course, a lot of, of course, laborers yeah. and stuff are coming yeah. by yeah. themselves. Yeah, um, but it's just is a great family place. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I would think about it, if I was here by myself. Yeah, you could have fun, and you know, if I was like you know, if you were single, but. Being a, a person, you know, being we're all family guys. We all came here. We all brought our families. We have families, but I'm right? not a family guy. Don't get it, don't <laughs> get it twisted. No, you are a family. I think you're the most he's family guy. the most guy. family guy. You're the most but family. He's got that, he's got How that. many Friday you, nights? You hear you that, don't, babe? You hear that? How many Friday nights you don't come? You don't do this. See, I don't We've got to answer why it doesn't come on Fridays. Right? We're sweet now. You are the most. You like to, you like to come off. Plays are cool. Right? But yeah, cool. plays are cool, cool, but uh, you are the most. But I was going to say earlier when you were talking about all the, if you're a foodie, there's over 30,000 uh, restaurants. Uh, do you call them restaurants? Or yeah, cafes. Cafe right? restaurants. Yeah, I yeah. think they call, them, they call them F&Bs, right? Food and beverage yeah. areas or something. Here in Dubai alone. Dubai alone. Yeah. I have the issue of not being able to choose what I want. Yeah, there's nothing was on home, the app. Back home... <laughs> I mean, I can't choose anything. Yeah. There's nothing. Have you done that where you've, st- you've looked at your like, Talavad or whatever? App, and you're just going. Kid and then, no. so, I, look, I, I, I have a wife who, uh, who is, uh, who's forced me to be budget focused. <laughs> okay. Right? I don't know. Maybe it's a women thing in general, but she does. My wife, Alhamdulillah, she will not buy anything. Right, that's a blessing. By it the is. Way. Trust me, it yeah, is. That's a right, it's a blessing. Yeah. So she's it's totally the opposite, right? Yeah. You're like, she, stop spending. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, here with the apps, because it's an aggregated service, who's got the deals? Yeah. Who's got the yeah, free yeah. delivery? Yeah, who's yeah. got this? Well, you get a notification from Deliveroo. Order now and get twenty. Yeah, get twenty off, dirham. Here's twenty yeah. dirham. Yeah, here's yeah, this. Yeah. And which is great. Like, I wasn't even hungry, but shit, I'm yeah. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but stop the cooking. So I've gotten to the point now. Unless I'm really got a. 
a hankering for one. I knew you were gonna say that word. Right. Oh my god, okay. I knew he was gonna say right. hankering. Not craving. Right. I knew he was That's gonna say hankering. Pain, man. Right. <laughs> if you've got something like you, you, you're yeah. dying for it, I, I know this sounds bad, but okay, I, okay. Is delivery? Is there no f- delivery? No, nah, forget it. Is there thirty percent off or fifty yeah. percent up to thirty dirhams? No, nah, forget it. Well, you know, if my daughters just pop out of the blue and like, hey, Bubba, I'm hungry. And I'm like, and th- maybe there's no food at home, or maybe there's food at home, but they don't want it, whatever. I'm like, what do you feel like eating? Tell me anything. Yeah. Right? As soon as they say something, I'm like, all right, I got it. Like anything you can imagine. I, I mean, there are certain, we're not talking about prepared foods, but we're talking about like certain cereals, right, from America that you can't find, certain drinks, yeah. whatever, Just little things like that. Yeah, yeah. But anything on your mind that you can think of, you want tricks a hot dog, you want a dry There's healthy food too. <laughs> huh? It's not just all like, it's not what you think. It's all fast food. No, there's some really healthy places on there. Salads and sushi. Sushi. Well, and you get you can get like gourmet food delivered. Like yeah, it's yeah. not like oh, you're getting McDonald's or this. Like you can get delivery from Jesus and, 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 and they'll, and they'll pack you know, it in an ice thing. They'll uh, cover in this you know, ice the, with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. the salt, the steak plate. Yeah, yeah. The, the famous yeah. guy yeah, yeah. in four, four Seasons. Yeah. In on Jamaica Street, he delivers to my house. Oh, nice. I him himself. From him. He's my, like, here's your delivery. You <laughs> 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 reckon the delivery driver does it for us? <laughs> that will be 1,500 dirhams, please. <laughs> I didn't bother to look at it. I don't want to look at the prices, man, so I didn't bother. <laughs> oh, man. No, look, it's great. Look, it can be reasonable, man, but the first menu they show you is the gold encrusted menu. Mm-hmm. The gold, the steaks and gold burgers. Yeah. See, and so I went with... Uh, man, so gold sorry, doesn't taste like nothing, man. I had a couple of friends visit and so like, okay, let's go. So I took them there and we go and we sit down and that's the only menu they have on the table. Yeah. I swear, I think the steak was like 2,400 dirhams. The burger was like 1,500. Wow. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I invited them, man. I'm like, what am I going to not, you know? And then I look into the guy and I'm like, hey man, is this the whole menu? He's like, no, no, that's the gold one. Give me the real one. menu, man. He brings me the other one and it, it, it's, it's expensive, but it's reasonably priced, right? Yeah, You're yeah. going to a place that everybody wants to go He's to. He's hard stopped. <laughs> can, I fake, can I fake a heart attack? <laughs> Call the ambulance. I was, I was about to be like, I left my wallet at home. Like, dude, we saw you do Apple Pay at Valet. Like, come on, get out of here. But he's, he's even, that excuse. But even how great about, about food and how being accessible here is in the UAE is like have the great idea of that you can be in a park or at the beach and you can order food. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think we could do that back no, home. No, no way you could. Maybe no, in the they States, a, but no, 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 they need an address. They so. need a proper address yeah, or they because, won't deliver. Right, yeah. right. Because right? it's dangerous, right? Like I used to be a Pizza Hut delivery driver back in the day. Some people used to order at a park. We refused to deliver yeah. because uh, you'd get jumped at the park. There's no, it's not a house. There's no cameras, so to speak, or there's no one else around. You could get jumped at the park. So, so we'd have to yeah. jump really high to get this dude. <laughs> 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 I'm surprised in the States, though, that the delivery guys don't wear body cams. Yeah, I mean, I'm I surprised would. everybody doesn't wear a body cam, obviously. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's I mean, just for safety purposes, right? Are there that many things happening with delivery guys in the States? I haven't heard a lot of crazy stories. Well, I've seen a lot of things like, for instance... Um, people opening yeah. food. Well, yeah, people take your stuff. Well, the delivery guys don't drop yeah. it or they mishandle it and yeah, all that yeah. shit. You yeah, know? Yeah. Or, for example, uh, eat your chips on the way and says, oh, they forgot to pack your chips for you. Yeah, yeah, French fries he's referring to. Uh, the other day I was at a restaurant <laughs> and the back door, they have like a back door entry yeah. and it says no bag, no food. And so my daughter's like, what does that mean? Like, And I was like, well, this is for the delivery people. They have to bring their bag with them so that the restaurant who's taking responsibility, who's going to get reviewed, who wants to make sure their food is good, they can pack it in there correctly, make sure that it's put. Not they give the food to you and you go and the driver well, throws ha- it Haven't you ever noticed when the driver comes, he actually opens the bag opens and lets you take it out of the yeah. bag really yeah, yeah, does he give yeah. you the bag himself yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. just to, and they label like that like they didn't used to do this but maybe this is from COVID time but they put a sticker on it so you can tell it hasn't been opened right, right, right. not sealed. just on yeah, one yeah, seal yeah, sealed, yeah, sealed. Yeah. on every item yeah so you could have like pickles sealed yep hummus sealed Everything is sealed. I, I like it, but sometimes it gets in. I'm trying yeah. to eat. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to cut through all this plastic wrap and it's got yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> Especially when you're on a call or a meeting. Literally, we'll yeah. spend like five minutes. All right, guys, let's just open everything up and put it out, you know? Especially but, us, bro. We like gorillas, man. Like, we haven't seen but when it. they don't do it and it spills, I know. I that's know. when you get pissed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. God, the cheap mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they got 3.8 on their score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Alhamdulillah, man. Great place to be, man. Great to be. I don't think you can go wrong in the UAE, period. Like, I don't think somebody would move even to Ras Al Khaim or Ras Al Khaim or Om Al Quwain or something from their home uh, and, and feel like, wow, this is a downgrade. Yeah. But look, you have to look, like I said, it takes a while to make a nice group of friends. So you've got to find your people. Very, very important. You've got to find your people. The, your people are not going to find you. 
So normally that happens organically, you know, maybe for a school friend. You know, that's how we started a lot of it. That's how I got to know Timmy. That's how I got to know Schools you. Schools are good. WhatsApp groups, yeah. right? There's the, an American Dads group and an Australian yeah. Losers group. Sports. And a, <laughs> I mean, sports. You know, America's I'm, most wanted group. Yeah. <laughs> they escaped to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I also wanted to mention, because we were talking about the airports earlier, like we were talking about Sharjah, Dubai, and, and Abu Dhabi. Obviously, they have uh, nice airports. Coming into this, I was originally thinking that like, hey, it would be nice if you travel a lot for work or even to go back home often. It would be nice to be in Dubai because originally on my way here, I didn't look up prices, right? I was thinking like, well, Dubai is huge and it's got so many airlines and so many flights that they must be on the cheaper end. But, you know, after talking to you guys, uh, you know, before the show, we found that from Abu Dhabi, there's some cheap flights and from Sharjah. But all these airports are fairly close. So you also, when you move here, you also have good options to travel the yeah. world yeah, yeah. at very, very reasonable prices, man. Very, yeah, what's very up, what's reasonable up, there's prices. an hour distance between, if you think about Abu Dhabi airport to Dubai airport. It's an hour, hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Right? In, back home, what's it? It'd be six hours, eight hours between no, airports. Yeah, We've only got yeah. Sydney. And, and no, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, yeah. Gold Coast. I was saying within one state. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. That to go from if we if we if we were in Sydney uh, back home, we only got the Sydney airport. Right, yeah, right, correct, right. Correct. If, we, if we wanted to go to another state, that's another eight hours, oh, yeah, six minimum, eight hours minimum, drive. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. here. You know what? What's the distance between Dubai Airport and Sharjah? What, 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Not much, but yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I, I, I know it's weird to say, but it's like, isn't it kind of redundant? <laughs> it's so close yeah, to each did, other. Yeah, but when Al Maktoum opens, I mean, yeah. it's already open, but when Al Maktoum is fully expanded and they close DXB, Al Maktoum and Abu Dhabi are going to be within 20 minutes to half an hour of each other, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be even closer. So yeah, yeah. you can actually just go to the Do you think they'll close two. down the, the DXB? I think it'll be I, years in, before they'll close. Look, the I don't look. Uh, it's gonna. It's definitely gonna lower traffic. We spoke about traffic before. One of the main issues going towards Sharjah is uh, that's also the same direction as the airport. So if because now they're building more towards the Abu Dhabi way with the uh, Arjan, Arabian Ranches Three, the Mac Lagoons, all of those areas, I feel like a lot more people are going to move there too. So that should really ease up the traffic. I don't think they'll close it, but it might be just maybe for Emirates only or. It might be just for private planes. Mm. or they, they, they'll, they'll repurpose it. You know how Dubai is always repurposed. You know the old Abu Dhabi airport? It's empty. I don't know. They don't even know what they're going to do with it. But that area where DXB is, man, it's, 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 it's not central, con, like Burj Khalifa central. But no, yeah, but it's not far from downtown man. for 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, they, they could, could just redevelop knock it. that down and build a whole Units bunch of stuff, man. Yeah. That's the one thing I do and like And if they about don't, the... they should power wash it at least. I don't know if you guys have noticed, <laughs> but it's so... You're about to fly out, right? Tomorrow, the next day, it will be dark, but... You On know, the it's outside? Like a, it's like a cylinder, yeah, from yeah, the outside. Yeah. It's so dusty, It's the old school airport now, man. It just needs a power wash, man. It drives me crazy. I know, but... Yeah, I'm redundant, man. They're going to clean it. Yeah, but DXB has always been expanding, man. I mean, like when I came in 2002, it was a much different airport than yeah, when, I came, when I arrived in uh, 2018. Somebody told me that it's the longest building in the world. And I don't know if that's oh. true or not. Well, if you, if you go from what, like it Probably is a bit a of a walk. To to it can be a bit oh of a God, walk from off, from off the plane yeah. to get through customs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah, if you're yeah. not, if you've land, um, so if I go, if you go from, if you fly to Bahrain, You'll go to you'll go to the airport. Beautiful airport in Bahrain. It is. Oh, oh. I've never been. But oh my it's nice. God. It's, it's a nice so airport. So amazing. But to go from Dubai, it's in I think Terminal D or something. In t like not Terminal D. There's Terminal Three, which is international. Right. But and then, then the there's D the D. D, D yeah. okay. That's a long yeah. walk. Damn walk. Well, if you see the sign, it's like right. D1 through D88. You better hope you're not in the 60s, 70s, right. 80s. And it's a long yeah. walk. And they catch a bus to the. Uh, that's a bus service from the gate to the plane. Yeah. Right. Well, when I went to Zanzibar, we had to take our bus. It took like half an hour man, to get to the. Um, once we landed, to, to we had to take a bus from the terminal to the other terminal and then walk it. It was. Yeah, and if you get you if go. you get one of those flights, which I think Zanzibar was one where you <coughs> fly get Dubai. off not in the airplane, like you get off uh, on, on the, the tarmac, tarmac, yeah, tarmac, and then you ride on a bus. You're like, okay, it's going to be two minutes, and no, then no. he's going and driving <laughs> like so long to me, so like 20 long, minutes, bro. Yeah, man. Wow. It's ridiculous. They even have like a clock up top that tells you you'll arrive at your destination in 20 minutes, and it's like counting down. That's the last thing you want after a flight. Oh, yeah, yeah. It really yeah. is, man. It really, really yeah. is. You're going to jump in a taxi and get home, man. Yeah, yeah. So they should just have taxis right there. Yeah, I'm that's, not why, that's why I was surprised because so you know, I've been to all three airports, but it took, you know, Sharjah was the first time I went to Sharjah was to drop off my family. And I, honestly, in my mind, I, and again, apologies to the, to the people of Sharjah, uh, I thought it was going to be a dump. You know, I thought it was like this, some little tiny 
like with little planes and all that. It was, I was actually very well, you know, yeah. it was easy to get in, easy to park. I mean, I parked right in front. I, I wouldn't say the, it's a dump, but compared yeah. to Abu Dhabi and Dubai, it's yeah, very, very have you small. Been to the it's new small. Abu... I would say it's small. But have yeah. you been to the new Abu Dhabi airport? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have too. It's I, really nice. I picked up my, uh, really I picked nice. up my family last year. Yeah. I also picked but, up my yeah. family too. Me yeah. too. I picked up my in-laws <laughs> no, and I picked up my family just too. picking people up. <laughs> no, but it's a lot cheaper. They all went Etihad out of Sydney, right? Yeah, yeah. That was cheap. It was cheaper. And we're not talking about a couple of dollars. We're talking about like, I think almost a thousand dollars Australian per ticket. Yeah. So it was a really good saving. So my brother came, it was five of them. I mean, that's a 5,000, sorry, six of them. That's a $6,000 saving, man. Yeah. That's bloody, yeah, yeah. you know, can, you know, I don't know, stay another week at a hotel here if they wanted to, you know, or, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a fair distance. During COVID, I, uh, I took a one-way flight from, uh, from Abu Dhabi. And uh, from, from Dubai, it was like six times the price. Wow. It was like, so I rented a car one way. Dropped it off, and Smart. honestly, I it's hate. Cheaper. I hate to rent cars, right? Just because of the go inside and the paperwork, right? I'm like when it comes yeah. to those things, I'm impatient, yeah, right? Yeah, it's me too. the 10, 15 minute, then drop it off and do, and okay, let me go check the guy. I'm like, I took a picture, it's done. Just give me the like, the, you know. So I hate doing that, but it was like so worth it at that time. Like, yeah. it was it was yeah. a no brainer. You know what I mean? Yeah. I will say that if you're catching Uber. From here to Abu Dhabi, yeah. it's about four hundred dirhams. Well, I think it was. Uh, so I did the I did the, um, the hiring a car was one way cheaper. rental, but it was it through is. Etihad Airways, and yeah. they also they have a shuttle, but yeah. they had cancelled it during Corona, so you, there was no shuttle. Yeah, Etihad always has a shuttle bus. It's a free, free shuttle, yeah. But they drop you at Ibn Battuta Mall. They don't drop you wherever you want. They, they drop pick you. you up if you're going to Abu Dhabi. They pick you up there. Yeah, 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 from, yeah, 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 yeah. But so I'm you, saying, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's a nice mall too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, so far out, but I love that mall. Look, most of the malls of Dubai are nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Even the small ones, small man. Ones, Even yeah. the small ones Oasis, that you, that you like. Oasis, yeah, I, mean, I have, I have. There's Town Square Centre. They all got... There's even one... Um, there's... I mean, I want to call it really a mall. Like Spinners. You know, even the Spinners and the Carry 4, they have like... They'll be like the main tenant, but it'll be like a little mall and it'll have like a money exchange. Right, right, right. Little cafe. They all got their own uses. You end yeah, up yeah. using all the services. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like the one next to me has one that fixes keys. It came in handy when I needed to copy my key. Yeah, yeah. I go to Abu Dhabi. Oh, it's not Abu Dhabi. I go to the Arabian Ranches too. Yeah. You know, which is across the road from me, you know. Yeah. And that's where I do my keys. That's where I go pray. There's a pharmacy. There's there's a, that's where I go to Carrefour on Fridays after, you know, after Jamal prayers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's convenient. convenient. I love it. Meditiv City Center is a very nice mall. Oh, I don't know if you guys yeah. have been. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a really, really nice mall. Very underrated mall because it's in Meditiv, right? But yeah. like if you go, Meditiv, no, it's really, really nice. Service is a specific population. They've got, they've got, a got lot of such locals. a massive like arcade um, and family They have two magic yeah, planets. D- two, two magic planets, In bro. the same place, you just go for one. One on I the food I court. I only went to the Decathlon. I didn't notice. Yeah. Uh, you know Magic Planet, the arcade? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So there's a... It's, I don't want to say small, right? But it's a smaller one attached to the food court. Then they've got a huge one with... Uh, what is that air thing called where you can do like fake skydiving? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. got bowling amazing. and everything. Yeah, it's really, it's really... A, it's amazing. Lots of lots of food options. Lots of food, options. Long, lots of food options. Yeah, we, we got should. P.F. Chang's. I love P.F. Chang's. Yeah. So <laughs> that's such an American. <laughs> is it? I it's don't an know, American man. Chain. I mean, it's an American, it's an American chain, chain, of course. But for an American, but it's an American to say, thing to yeah, like PF chain. chain. It's an American thing Ding to like in a uh, Chinese Ding restaurant. Ding Tang Fang is the way to go, man. Say again. Yeah. Ding Tang P- Fang is it? PF Changs. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different brand, man. What the hell? <laughs> what, what Apologies you, to our Chinese listeners. What did you say? Ding Tang no. Fang. <laughs> I might be saying I think you should cut that. I, think you something. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to put the accent on it like that. It just <laughs> came out like that. <laughs> oh, but, but, okay, going about the Chinese, there's a lot, you know, since I've been here, you'd, we've seen different nationalities because of certain situations back in the home countries, yeah. right? When the Ukrainian and Russian war was happening, right, we saw a lot of Ukrainians and Russians. Now, some of them are going back home. The war's winding down. Now we're seeing more Chinese. You know, when I was first came here, I barely saw any Chinese. Now there's a lot of Chinese. They're buying well, you know, properties, Imar, well, setting up they're businesses. Investing, investing mostly. They're investing, they're setting up, exactly. You they're know, setting Imar, up businesses. I'm yeah. out of the builder, right? Yeah. The biggest builder here in Dubai. They'll put up billboard ads for a new development, and it'll be all in Chinese. Yeah. No Arabic, no English. No, it'll be all in Chinese, Chinese. especially at a uh, uh, Creek Harbor, Dubai yeah. Creek Harbor. Because you got to understand, in China, they can't buy freehold. Like it's all 90, whatever, 70 <coughs> year leases, year lease. or whatever it is. So yeah. you never really own it. And then after that, you have to sell it back, sell it on the market, or you have to buy it back off the government, I guess. So it's, I mean, here in the UAE, it's freehold. I mean, not all areas, but I mean, it's another big advantage too. You get yeah. to own it and you go, whatever you re- re- have written in your will, 
it gets passed down to, I mean, you could keep it in your family generation forever. Yeah. But that's why a lot of people are, are struggling trying to get a break, having a break, you know, because prices are going up because yeah. we're getting, a, there are a lot of pe- say, rich, that's, rich people from many different no, but countries see, that's around the, thing, the world. Right? Not, a rich buying, person doesn't want to live in Ajman. I'm just saying. Dubai. Yeah, right. or or well, the only thing that you said about the other Emirates, right, is to save money. So yeah. if you have, if you have money, unless like you don't have to be cheap, right, but you could just be like a saver. Like we talked about the person who doesn't want to spend a yeah. car. Mm. But if you have money and you're willing to spend it, I'll live in the heart. I won't live in my car Correct. as much. I'll be close to all of these things to do. And uh, the but quality also, of life, but man. Also, Dubai is disproportionate too because, look, it's like going to a basketball practice. You're going to see more tall people than what you would see out in society, right? Or if you're going to go to somewhere where everyone's sick, you're going to be more sick people than what actually are sick. So if you're with Dubai, there's a lot of people that are wealthy. So we're, we're sort of mingling, not that we really are, but sort of in, in general terms, we're mingling with the rich and famous. So you're going to feel like everyone's rich, but not really. If with you the rich, pay attention. not the famous, but the rich. Like, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't mean that yeah, as a joke, no, but like, there's you, yeah. so many rich people here, but they're just rich because they opened a company, they have a website, they did something. A family money. Yeah, but Most if, of them are not known. So yeah, they're, they're, no, but that's the thing. But if they, all, if they all congregate in one location, you're going to feel like, hey, everyone's rich here. But no, that's not the reality. Right, right. So because Dubai has that reputation, but you just go 20 minutes out, man, it's completely different. Look at al Quds. al Quds. you got Jumeirah, which is like, whoa. You but know, I'm sure the per capita of rich people here has got to be yeah, one of the highest in the world. It is. I think in Dubai than anywhere it, in the yeah, world. Yeah. 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 No, it's a third. Third, okay. third place. Yeah. So, yeah, so right. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a very, very small place. Like number one and two, I don't know what they are, but they could be huge places that can accommodate. But, but even if you're looking at the average household in Dubai, probably to buy versus an average household in Sharjah, there is a significant Okay. It's Dubai. a 65% difference in okay. price. But Timmy, say right? Dubai Hills, right? Say, say you were a European family <clears> that moved here... I don't know, seven years ago, and you bought in Dubai Hills, You've your property's value has gone up seven or eight times. The big time. So you bought for 2 million dirhams, now worth 14. You know, you're not going to experience that type of capital growth anywhere else in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. So and I mean, that's, that's also just an, why. Oh, you that's would just an attestment yeah. to the emirate or the country oh, itself at its growth and its potential and the, the faith that everybody has in it, right? Because when you buy something, you believe that, hey, this is going to maintain its value. This is going to be where I'm going to be. This is the place to be. Nobody's spending that kind of money in places like, oh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the economy. What if this president gets elected? What if that president gets elected? Let me wait till after the election. Let me, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's always, there's a, there's a war going on. Let yeah. me see what, you know what I mean? Like all of those are factors that you, that you, that you take into account. Just real quick, man, last couple of minutes. You've got, if you have money. What's your recommendation? Somebody says, hey, Timmy, I have money. Look, if I had money, it would be... You've lived here now. So we're taking this as a very good suggestion. If I had money, consistent, great salary. I would say if you've got about a good 60 to 100, like 60 plus, Dubai definitely. 60 that, plus what? US or dirham? Dirhams. Dirhams, 60, dirhams, so dirhams about 20,000 American. 20,000 American a month. A month. Right? Just, you know, you're living Which very is a well. a lot of money. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. A lot of money. Right? That's a lot. But not as much as it used to be. Correct. Because now rents are higher. Yeah, that's and, right. and Scot- but Dubai or Abu Dhabi, right? You're talking about a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. So but you're saying if somebody like makes less than a quarter million, they should not think about Dubai? They should start looking at Look, some I, of the other I, Emirates. Okay. I'll answer the same right. question. If you're a family. I'm going to advise what I advise my clients in my business. I don't advise clients, for example, in Australia that want to buy their first house to buy a $1.5 million house. It doesn't make sense. You start small. And then as you grow, your property, your portfolio, your circumstances grow with you. So I'd recommend you buy an Ajman or Sharjah, get into the market at a relatively low price, well, very low price point, grow by two, three, four, five over the next five or 10 years. Then once you've made it, you've got some good rental income, some passive income. Then if you want to sell one or two of them, the market's hot, you capitalize on that, you buy in Dubai. That's, I, I, yeah. I would recommend you buy an Ajman or Sharjah if, if, if you want to move to the UAE. And to, if you are thinking about coming to the UAE, don't just come to Dubai. Go and check out all the all other of them. Emirates. Do your research. Right? Yeah. Now, if you are working for an employer, I agree with you. Unless it's remote worker, right? Yeah, Unless you're remote. You if you have to be, okay, you've got a job in Dubai, you might have to work yeah, in, live, or live in Dubai or in minutes. Sharjah, right? Oh, correct. But if you, like you guys, for instance, or you're starting up a company and you're working from home, check the other Emirates, right? Um, cost of living in Dubai is high, even though there's no tax. Ha- check out the other Emirates. One of the things that I wish I had known was I wish I had done more research on different Emirates. Yeah. What about you, Karim? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a Dubai 
Abu Dhabi guy myself. Yeah. I love both of them. I love the uh, stress free of Abu Dhabi. I also think that in Dubai, there's a lot of places that you can find, like you said, you can find a villa for 100,000 uh, dirhams uh, a what? year rent. Um, I mean, you can find those in no, you in, can. In you the definitely outskirts. can. Yeah, they're, they're maybe in Dubai South. South. No, no, no. Even can. in my even in my area, which the I don't want to say because I don't want people to. I don't want people moving to my area and crowding <laughs> it up and messing it up. But like even in my area, man, there's they're, very they're, reasonable. They've gone up now. There's very the reasonable Hills places. Too. Yeah, the Mac Hills too. So when I came here, the Mac Hills too, they were for us. Let's say three or four bedroom. They were like sixty, seventy thousand. Now they're one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So, but even there's a lot of but there's a lot of villas coming on the market. The Mac Lagoons finishes next year. Raby Ranches three finishes the year after. Yeah, but they'll be pushed. No, but I thought the same as you. I thought honestly that with all these villas, the prices would go down, right? It's not. No, because they're the, actually going up. I'm not criticizing, but yeah. they are. They sort of manipulating the stock. They are. There's a lot of projects that are finished. Yeah. That are close to being finished. That they're delaying so they can make sure rents stay. Um, I mean, that's not, it's out of my technical expertise. So I don't make those type of decisions. But look, I mean, you're right. But I think there will be a small period, six months to a year, where you'll see a little bit of a drop. Um, but it's still, still. Last thing I want to say about this because we need to wrap it up. But 93% of residential areas in Dubai are apartments, 0.7% are villas, and the other 6.3% are, are townhomes or something like that. So this is why villas are so expensive and they continue to be expensive because mm. even developers are saying, I have this plot of land, I could build you know, 70 villas. Or I could build Go up. three high rises and yeah. have six hundred units. So they're going high rises. Anyway, guys, I think this was a good conversation. Um, if any of the listeners have questions, they want more details, more input, please just leave a comment below, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. We thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and even share some of these videos with your friends. Um, we're really, really trying to get out there. So we appreciate you guys listening. Timmy, Ali, thanks, uh, thanks for coming. Great conversation. Uh, Eid Mubarak to you guys. You too. Uh, you know, Thanks, we man. have uh, Eid al-Adha coming up, inshallah. <coughs> and uh, then we have the summer. When this may be one of the last ones that we do of live the together. Yeah. yeah, of the season. Yeah, so uh, so anyway, stay tuned and uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys so much. This is a Taskcast live from Dubai. Not Abu Dhabi or Sharjah. Live from <laughs> Dubai. <laughs>